Super Hero Squad. Hasbro's toy line of collectible chibi Marvel heroes for children turned massively popular, massive multiplayer online role-playing game for everyone. I don't need to tell you the game did well. About 4 million players can do that for me. With dozens of activities and one of the biggest rosters for a Marvel game, it had potential. But, like a farmer that doesn't know what it's doing, old Macazillion took its cash cow out back and cut it down in its prime. But, where there's a fan base, there's hope for a revival. That's right, some avid fans of the original have taken it upon themselves to bring the game back to its original state. However, while most assets were able to be ported over, the code itself needed to be made from the ground up. During the remake's demo, there were several updates that had to reset player data, including their required characters. And while something like this won't be present in the official release, if we are to get another demo, it's safe to say there will never be a better time to know how to get the most bang for your fractal. And that's where I come in. Today, I'm going to be telling you which characters are worth it and which are a terrible investment. Now, before you go into the comments, I hear you constantly, like a prophet receiving visions from an angry god. TJ, what gives you the right to tell me my character is trash? Well, other than the three documents I spent a year on detailing every stat and moveset of over 190 characters and determining their most optimal playstyle in the harshest of conditions, I'm not. This video is not meant to incite elitism. Play who you want. With enough grinding or in the right team, any character is viable. And that's the beauty of this game. This is more or less just for fun. It's also all I'm qualified to do now, so let me have this. Either way, my goal is to help you make informed decisions about those character choices, as well as give the devs ideas on how to buff and nerf the cast for a more balanced experience. The list I've created is based heavily on how quickly you can solo a crisis mission to gain the most fractals, the most experience, the highest scores, and in turn, allow you to collect the most characters in the shortest amount of time. Essentially, we're asking how quickly you can see return investment on that character you just bought. Now, if you only care for the rankings and not the how or why, you can skip ahead using the timestamps. But for everyone else, I will be explaining the specific trial I took each character through, some of the fundamentals of the game, and how I chose to break down each moveset into its respective playstyles. Well, there were quite a few factors and trials going into the making of this ranking. <laughs> Rhyme. Most of those factors are covered by each character's performance in the Crisis Trial. The Crisis mission I chose in particular was Creatures of the Night, as it had every main challenge I wanted to focus on. Hordes. In most missions, goons are significantly less powerful than the player character and spawn in such a way that you can easily take them out in small, manageable groups with every character. In Creatures, however, it's much easier to get swarmed putting the player's ability to crowd control to the test, as it's much harder to just jump away, given how easy it is to become staggered before you can make any significant distance. Stagger is a mechanic wherein you will be forced into this animation when you are hit and are not attacking. Some characters are easily staggered, some take longer to recover than others, and some have tools to ignore this completely, but for the most part, this is something universal. Boss Encounter Horde Dispatchment is then further challenged by attempting to take out a boss at the same time. A boss will keep the waves of goons coming until he is defeated and can punish the player hard if a character's moveset is too committal to move out of the way in time. Boss Immunity A unique mechanic to bosses is that they cannot be staggered or interrupted, nor can you apply any status effects to them. They can't even take any knockback. The only thing bosses are affected by is raw damage and invisibility. Some characters can exploit boss immunity with their hero up and dispatch them quickly. Others rely on status effects to be effective in general and eat dirt for it. Higher level goons. After defeating Dracula and another horde, you are then faced with two mind-controlled heroes. These represent goons that are actually stronger than the player character, but as a trade-off, appear in far lesser numbers. Characters that depend on bosses not taking not back to deal with them may actually struggle more here as these enemies still react normally to attacks. Most of the time. But, but, how? I'm invisible! I'm invisible! Leave me alone! Rush. After doing this all once more, you advance to the next stage where you face off against Drac one on one, who will eventually call in Mole Man Wendigo like a. Not only are you fighting three bosses at once, but Mole Man will also call in Giganto like a wussy bit. Once you have all those defeated, you can turn your attention back to Drac, who will then call in three of the four mind controlled heroes. Then finally, you'll fight him one last time. 
This would be difficult to solo and score well in any circumstance, but it was particularly difficult for the cast because they were trialed as soon as I unlocked their whole moveset, level 10 which is about a few hours of grinding, and when I feel you should start seeing that return investment. Now that we understand the mechanics of the challenge, let's break down the mechanics of the challengers. The game doesn't go out of its way to define a lot of the tools you have at your disposal, so most of the terms used will be ones I myself made. Which definitely wasn't a ploy to force those who skipped ahead to come back and learn how to actually play the game instead of mashing their mouse. I would never do that. Archetypes. One of the few things the game does go out of its way to tell you is how the character will primarily be attacking. Characters can either be a brawler, ranged, or hybrid character. A brawler will specialize in close quarter combat. This means that to be in range, everyone you're attacking will have to be in range of you. A brawler will need something to dominate the field or else they will be overwhelmed on the front lines. Whether this be enough damage to end the encounter quickly, a good amount of status effects, so you're attacking your opponent more than they can attack you, or enough defenses to just tank the damage. A bad brawler will have none of these qualities and little to no crowd control. A terrible brawler will focus heavily on a single target despite regularly getting themselves surrounded. A ranged will specialize in attacking from a distance. However, given the pace of the gameplay, enemies will eventually get in your face. A ranged character needs something to punish them hard for doing so, or have more tools at their disposal to circumnavigate the issue entirely. In fact, how a ranged character plays around this is so diverse, I needed to break down this category into several to better represent each ranged character's playstyle. Trappers, Zoners, and Hit and Runs. Trappers play from a distance, dancing from target to target in order to apply stagger to whom they deem fit and play keep away. Then hit hard with their finisher or a power attack when enemies get in close. Zoners tend to cover the whole field with beam attacks for maximum crowd control. Some can also easily dance between close, mid, and far range for even more control and efficiency. Hit and runs will specialize in racking up damage while staying on the move to avoid taking any damage themselves. Evasion, evasion, evasion is the key to this archetype. Like a more violent edition of Peekaboo. And lastly, hybrids. Even if you have four ranged attacks and only one that's melee, the game will still call you a hybrid. So I will too. A good hybrid will obviously take the benefits from each form, and a bad one will exacerbate the flaws of one or both styles. Like, charging in with a melee attack only to shoot at a single target right after getting yourself surrounded. You know, like an idiot. Your family is literally a dynasty of tactical geniuses, how are you f***ed up this bad? Basic Strength While archetypes can determine a character's entire moveset, it mostly focuses on your basic strength. This is a set of moves that the player will always have access to when they left click on an enemy. If you're not in range, the character will approach until they are. It's a point and click. Spacing will typically not be an issue. Don't overthink it kiddos, that's my job. I said let me have this, dang it! If you are in range, the game will let you switch to that target in between the attacks with a few exceptions. This is a good way to evenly spread out your damage or abuse the stagger mechanic. Other than one special gamma-infused snowflake that we'll get to later, every character will have a set of 5 basic moves. 5 moves does not equal 5 attacks, however. For example, Spider-Man has 7. A 1-2 punch, Do it again. a flip kick forward, a series of web shots, and a backwards flip kick. If you want to be a nerd and count each web ball, he actually has 9. Regardless, you can tell a series of attacks are part of the same move if the character follows through even if there are no targets to hit. I hope you liked that example, because we will see that combo a lot. Spiders. spiders it is then. No, that wasn't. But she was already pouring oh him a God, brimming glass so of spiders. spiders the basic string is always at your disposal, and determines how quickly you gain stars for the rest of your moveset. So they're arguably the most important to get right. Doesn't matter how pretty the roof is if the foundation is made of cardboard. Star meter. The total amount of damage you deal to each enemy per base attack will determine how quickly you earn these things which means any character with good damage or crowd coverage will gain stars quickly. If you're weak but usually hit 50 enemies at a time, you'll still get to use power attacks on the reg. Power attacks. A set of 3 moves that cost 1, 2, and 3 stars respectively. And yes, while you can set which one you spawn in with, you can also switch to any you have unlocked at any time. You can use all 3. Not many of you do. Yeah, those times you didn't heal your teammates because you selected a different power? 
You could have saved them, you monster. There are a lot of effects powers can have. It would probably take another hour for me to go through all of them. You can't make me do that. Legally. No. No, no. Please. God, no. No, please. No. However, I can abbreviate them into the following categories. Destructive. These are honestly more harmful to use for you than anything else. They leave you vulnerable or make a bad scenario worse. Destructive power tats can have their uses, but generally, you'll die for showing these powers any love. Throwaways. These aren't terrible, but they can feel like a waste as they don't really affect the flow of combat. If anything, you could have achieved a better result with another attack. Think throws that only hit one enemy and will stun them as long as the end lag of the move. Uncomplimentary. These powers would be good had they been part of a different move set. It doesn't make sense to push enemies back only a little if you have to walk right back into range to attack again. For these next two, in the sake of being succinct, will be what I focus on in the breakdown. Assume the rest are the three types I just mentioned and not worth using. Complimentary. These powers go hand in hand with other moves and the overall playstyle. Like a character with invisibility having a big 3 star power attack to come out of stealth with for a highly damaging surprise attack. Exploitative. These powers would be useful no matter who you gave it to. These powers will absolutely carry a less than stellar moveset due to its effects. General rule of thumb, your first power attack should help you in a pinch, your second should be able to shift the flow of combat to your favor, typically with boosts, and your third should be a discount hero up when you really need a powerful attack sooner rather than later. Boost. Typically activated with the second power attack, these are short term buffs the player can apply to themselves. These can either be multiple buffs across several moves, two boosts, or multiple buffs contained in a single move, two in one boost. I will be differentiating the two via the text you see on the screen now. And yes, this is important. Single boosts last longer and are typically a stronger buff than two in ones, and two in ones last longer and are typically a stronger buff than three in ones. So for example, First Appearance Cyclops has three boosts. You can activate all of them and the duration and effectiveness will be more than Drax's, which is a three in one. They'll be more effective because a three in one will divide the strength of each effect across the three. However, Drax will have all three active much quicker and with fewer stars. That's the trade-off. So no, a character with only one boost is not objectively worse. It all depends on how a boost can help that character specifically, whether or not they rely too heavily on it, and if they will be at a loss when they cannot use it safely, such as the case for characters that don't have an attack attached to the activation, nor any status effects to cover the startup. While there are five boosts in the game, you can only have four with a power attack. Damage. This increases the strength of all of your attacks for a time. Doi. But there are a select few with an additional effect that I've dubbed the Intouple Knockdown Boost. Intouple Knockdown. This, in addition to strengthening your attacks, applies a knockdown property to all nine of a character's moves for every single hit. This is extremely useful as enemies that would usually mop the floor with you can no longer stand to throw a punch during the entirety of your combo. Health. Some characters actually regen HP as a passive but a health boost will do this more quickly and in a greater quantity. Armor. This will lessen the damage you absorb when hit, keeping you in the fight just a little longer. Super Armor. Very few characters have a unique trait in that their armor boost also makes them uninterruptible while it's active. We will dub this variant with my favorite cheese in Smash Bros. No, not that kind, but I respect your taste. Good choice. Speed. Probably the least effective boost this increases your movement speed, but only your movement. Attack speed will stay the same, which is real unfortunate for some slowpokes we will cover today, though this boost can still be useful in quickly evading and gathering consumables. Hero up. And lastly, you can spend the whole meter for one massive attack that is generally the hero's most powerful tool. Generally. You're meant to use this to get enemies off of you quickly, deal massive damage, and kill bosses. Pretty straightforward, but don't underestimate its necessity. You have your slams and bursts. The most common, but also the most commonly effective. This one big attack is great for crowd control with a massive show of power. Lunges. The character will jump from where you initiated the attack, leaping from one target to the next anywhere from four to eight times, then return to the starting position. The main drawback to this move is that you have no control over how many targets are hit or who is hit. 
which is not great if the game chooses not to target the biggest threats. There are two variants to this move. Functional. Your hurt box will shift to where the character attacks, virtually make them unhittable for its duration. Excellent for survival. Dysfunctional. Your hurt box will remain at the starting point of the attack, essentially leaving you free to be wailed on by the several enemies not being hit as the character takes a sweet little time selecting targets. Aerial Spins The character will leap into the air and bring it around town. Some characters will have a blind spot around the Gluteus Maximus, and select few will hit multiple times. Ricochet Similar to a lunge but with a thrown object, this tends to have an active hitbox during the whole duration so it can hit multiple times as it travels. Light em ups. Typically, the character will turn clockwise, firing their weapon at their 12 and 9 o'clock, then their 9 and 6, and so on until they fired in all cardinal directions twice. However, some just spin around with solid beams. There's a less control variant, while inconsistent does tend to fire more shots overall. We will call these haywire light em ups. Summons. Fairly unique from hero to hero, but what they all have in common is that they provide another source of damage output and act as meat shields. There's currently a debilitating bug of varying degrees in which your character will be uncontrollable or at the very least unable to attack some targets for a time. This can heavily influence the effectiveness of the move unfortunately. But until that is fixed, I have to acknowledge it, otherwise I'd feel Mass Mind Control. These turn any goons in range to your side. However, they tend to be weak as to not kill your new allies before they can be of any use. So they are poor for conventional use. While you now have an army at your disposal, any enemies disposed of while registered as your ally will not drop food or stars. Quite the hefty trade-off. Stunners. Speaking of trade-offs, these moves typically trade good damage for a long stun. Usually good against hordes and a death sentence against bosses. Stick of moves. Rush towards your enemy with a powerful attack, then straight through them to avoid taking any damage yourself. Airstrikes. These tend to land inconsistently and deal low damage per hit, but can be among the strongest in the game if you can hit at least three. And lastly, the Chadwalk. This is an attack that generally generates a field around the player that prevents most forms of melee attacks while dealing damage and popping enemies up on repeated contact. Run around the field to get the most from this move and wiggle to at least deal average damage to a boss. The power attack variant is typically weaker and doesn't last as long, but comes with the same benefits, thanks to Monkey Debaxi who came up with the turn. Some, if not all of these attacks, have variants that hit multiple times, which will be noted if they apply. Now that we're all on the same page, a quick breakdown followed by more details regarding specific commentary on a character's playstyle will go as follows. Thunderbolt's Punisher is a zoner with 300 HP, 263 total basic damage, a 2-in-1 health and damage boost he doesn't need, with a spinning, multi-hit burst hero up that he cannot take damage during, for some reason. And, he is Superhero Squad Online's resident god-tier character. Yes, I started with the top. Imagine if I built up to that. That's the equivalent of starting your fighter pass with a completely unexpected character at an unexpected event, then ending it over a year later with the 10th fighter from Fire Emblem on a random Tuesday, also known as anticlimactic. Against all reason, the emo dad who lives in his van was made stronger than gods, devils, and just anyone who can canonically whip his ass on the regular. Everyone! He is beating the second strongest character in the game by almost double. Because the original team wouldn't know balance if I hit them over the head with a Wii Fit. At level 1, he will deal over a thousand damage with his hero up. And because, I repeat, he takes no damage during it, you can maximize your HP regen with the boost. This essentially makes him immortal and able to solo the crisis with zero deaths as soon as you acquire him. <clears throat> Not sure where that came from, but let's continue, working our way down from here. These next two characters also manage to avoid death completely, due to their abundance of overpowered complementary tools and death cheats respectively. However, it wasn't as brain dead easy as the roided uncle with the school shooter aesthetic. G Daredevil is a brawler with 350 HP, 178 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, a speed boost and a 2-in-1 health and damage boost, with an aerial spin and summon hero up. 
Shadowland is packed with tools that perfectly complement his fundamentals, and as icing on the cake are all the strongest variants of those tools in the game, for some reason. He's close range, so he benefits greatly from his first power attack, which flies him right to the intended target. You can select anyone that you want and he will always go straight to them. Anyone in front of that target will be kicked as well, usually for a one-hit kill. This is where his speed boost can be found, overwhelming goons even further with his superior movement. Speaking of boosts, the 2-in-1 is contained in his second power attack, an amazingly powerful flip kick that provides some decent crowd control. His third power is the strongest third power in the game. One, two? Nah, just one. Lights out, lad. There are moves similar to this, but none as powerful that hit as many targets. Though I've highlighted these moves first, his basics are no slouch, being the second strongest out of the whole cast and stylish to boot. The Daredevils all possess the kind of string you want to see from a brawler. Wide, powerful swings that toss the enemy around enough so that you are always dishing out more than you take regardless of the strength or amount of goons you're faced with. Oh, and his hero up? It took out six bosses at once, then summoned four ninjas in the survival trial. If that's not busted, I don't know what is. Black Panther is a brawler with 350 HP, 105 total basic damage, one exploitative and one complementary power attack with the best lunge in the game. This move is the best of its kind because even though the move is stereotypically designed to hit a single target for each pounce, Panther's has a unique AoE to his that allows nearby enemies to be hit as well. Then, when returning to his original position, it is possible to hit twice more. The move itself is one of the strongest of this hero up type, 114 per hit. While this is actually the average across the board, the fact that you cannot take damage during its duration really elevates its status as one of the best. During the three-man boss rush, if Winnego, Moman, and Drac have surrounded you, it's very possible to take them out with one usage of this move, as they will likely be hit at least five times. However, while hero ups are arguably the make or break move when it came to this challenge, it's not all Duchella has to offer. His basics are serviceable, dealing average damage with above average coverage, and if you do ever need to grab consumables safely, his invisibility has you covered. You can then come back out aggressively with his third power, which can be devastating up close. Overall, the no death run isn't free, but still entirely possible. Next, we have the S tiers. These characters did die or fail to keep up their score multipliers at some point, but it was typically during the absolute harshest challenges and it was still far less than the rest of the cast. In this tier, we will see characters with strong foundations that will make the most out of the fundamentals, characters with an abundance of tools that work well together, hero ups that make quick work of bosses, some of the best crowd control in the game, or characters that just cheat the hell out of death. Fitting that one of them is Deadpool. Generally, the characters further up the tier will get these results consistently, and characters further down might need that extra milestone. Like a sword that could definitely decapitate that minotaur, but you might want to sharpen the blade on a grindstone so you aren't fighting against the bone. War Machine, Mark II, is a zoner with 325 HP, 136 total basic damage, two complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and a multi-hit burst and light him up. His hero up would be considered a solid boss killer even before the damage boost, which is great if you don't have time to load it up first, like in the rush. If you do load it beforehand, it goes from solid to one of the best, dealing a combined total of 260 damage. With one of the only damage over times in the game for only one star and an above average mobile basic string, you won't be hurting when you can't use that hero up either. All in all, Rhodey will not struggle with any challenge thrown at him. Ronin is a brawler with 350 HP, 160 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 3 in 1 intouble knockdown speed and armor boost, with a slam hero up. Ronin is so good, it's annoying. He has top tier damage in both his string and hero up, and he cannot be surrounded given that all three of his power attacks are powerful crowd control moves. His basics will even cover him from behind, making him the most effective brawler with an intuple knockdown. Other than that though, he's just a dude swinging a hammer! 
I've never been so bored while wrecking house. Edgy Wolverine is a brawler with 300 HP, 73 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 3 in 1 intuple knockdown, speed, and health boost with a summon hero up, and passive healing. Conjuring some of the best X Men at his side for his hero up, a 3 in 1 intuple knockdown boost with an attack attached, along with solid powers and one of the fastest attack speeds in the game. I think we can forgive him for his weak damage output. Ice Force Wolvie is easily the best of his kind. The Cool Angel is a Brawler Trapper hybrid with 325 HP, 150 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 health and damage boost, with a burst hero up. Warren has top tier damage that will easily cover multiple enemies at once. To avoid being overwhelmed, Use his first power attack to quickly floor everyone in front of you with insane range. His third is a more powerful option that hits everyone around him for slightly less range. You can always use his boost for even quicker dispatchment or to top off your health. But he's not just designed for goons. His hero up is one of the strongest in the game and will make bosses a non-issue. Man, don't you just love it when a character is so surface level good that I don't have to take 30 minutes explaining it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get comfortable. Ant-Man is a brawler with 350 HP, 154 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, a speed boost, and a burst hero up. Though, technically, Ant-Man's boosts don't end there. Or should I say, debuffs. For his second power attack, Ant-Man tosses a grenade that shrinks a ridiculous amount of enemies. In this state, enemies have less health, deal less damage, and take even more than usual, technically giving Hank a double damage boost and one of the most effective armor buffs in the game. Obviously, this won't work on bosses, but this high damage will give him access to his hero up quickly, which deals a fantastic 233 damage. Juggernaut is a brawler with 400 HP, 124 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 speed and damage boost, with a multi-hit slam. Juggy is pretty quick for a big guy, making him quite the powerhouse when it comes to overwhelming targets while on the front lines. Use his boost to push this to the extreme. Marco has the highest HP stat in the game and will see little resistance acting as the tank of the group. However, if the fight ever is getting too hot to handle, you can charge right through and give yourself some breathing room. His base hero up is his true weak point. Taking 3 hits to deal average damage instead of all at once in one attack. This is still quicker than other multi hitters, so you won't be a sitting duck for too long, but regardless, it's best to establish this as less than ideal for later entries. But for Juggy in particular, his damage boost and tanky nature will make this barely noticeable. Until the rush that is. Carnage is a hybrid with 290 HP, 112 total basic damage. 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, a 3 in 1 damage, health, and speed boost with a haywire light em up. Though his basics are solid, with wide swings and decent movement that acts as a perfect blend of the other archetypes, his main source of absolutely f***ing wrecking is two of his power attacks in tandem. Using his third, you'll activate one of the strongest Chad Watts in the game. Apply the boost on his second, and now you're Speedy Gonzalez if he was a wrecking ball. With this method, not only are goons no match for Carnage, you forget all about his slightly below average HP. Getting the maximum return possible from the boost as a field of tentacles ensures you receive as little damage as possible during it. This leaves only bosses as the ones who could possibly take advantage of Carnage's weak point, but the potential 300 plus damage on his hero will consistently prevent them from doing that. Basically, Carnage is unstoppable. Oh my god, this hero killer is unstoppable. Rocket is a hit and run with 300 HP, 123 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 3 in 1 intuple knockdown health and armor boost with a haywire light em up airstrike. Rocket is a ranged character meant to be played up close. It's a perfect analog for the character, I love it. The optimal playstyle is so in your face despite his archetype making you think he'd play differently. Being at point blank ensures that every Hail Mary shot he fires lands. Being on the front lines isn't an issue for Rocket either as his small model already makes him hard to hit, and his bases are all over the place, so enemies will struggle to land anything at all. 
Use this boost to even further this damage dealing gap. Hard to fight back when you keep getting knocked on your ass. But wait, there's more. His hero up is the 12th strongest in the game. Seventh with a boost. Just keep in mind he'll focus fire in front of him, and he'll take bosses out faster than Captain America will dodge commitment. Overall, this trash panda will hit harder than a Mack truck with little to no dents himself. Iron Monger is a zoner with 350 HP, 139 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 in tuple knockdown and armor boost, with an airstrike hero up. They really gave an in tuple knockdown to the dude with machine gun arms. Obadiah really wanted no confrontation, huh? If an enemy does manage to make it through the initial bullet storm, he has a mass stun for first power attack. So if anything, they'll regret getting in closer. It looks like a ranged attack, but trust me, use that point blank for more mileage. It'll stun more enemies and give you an unopposed start to the basic string. Against bosses, the airstrike will consistently hit multiple times for big damage and early kills. Monger is a cruel and cunning businessman and his moveset reflects this, having a monopoly on who gets to deal damage. Falcon X07 is a hybrid with 350 HP, 112 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 3-in-1 in tuple knockdown, armor, and speed boost with a light em up airstrike. Sam Wilson really soars above the competition. Eh? Eh? No, seriously, he will constantly be flying out of the enemy's reach during his basic string. If he ever is getting overwhelmed, his first power attack is a quick get off me tool. For even more damage with the same level of crowd control, his third is a borderline hero up in its own right. His actual hero up takes nearly half a boss's health with a boost. As a bonus, he doesn't go into the bird aesthetic as much as you would think he would. He doesn't have anything stupid like a beak on his forehead, or something stupid like that. Future Foundation Mr. Fantastic is a brawler with 350 HP, 140 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Reed is all about star management. With all three power attacks providing amazing crowd control, having some of the best coverage in the game and knocking down everyone hit. You just have to decide how much you're willing to spend. Do you want to spam his first or hit harder with his third? There's no wrong answer here really, except maybe a sense of fashion. Not only are his basics on the high end, but so is his hero up. So while his crowd control alone leads him unopposed in most fights, he won't be hurting for raw damage against bosses either. The Cyclops that preferred yellow spandex is a zoner with 300 HP, 135 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, a speed, armor, and damage boost with a stunning burst hero up. Like I said before, Psy has a boost for every power, which on its own is immensely useful. But each power attack has its own benefit even without them. His first will floor a ridiculous amount of enemies, giving him a leg up against even the tougher goons. His second will push them back for some breathing room, and his third can be used to gain even more distance as Cyclops will roll back after firing a beam for decent damage. If the overall range and raw damage of his hero up didn't take out an enemy, it surely will do so the second time. Not much goons can do to stop him, as the hero up will leave them stunned for quite some time. Edgy Deadpool is a brawler with 300 HP, 114 total basic damage, one very exploitative power attack, a 2-in-1 damage and health boost with a slam hero up and passive healing. Remember when Thanos cursed Deadpool with immortality? Gaz did the same thing. His third power attack is a weaker version of a lunge hero up, which he cannot be attached during. Load up the good old Kirby Crackle beforehand and you are basically immortal. Basically. It's not foolproof, but DP is more than just bouncy fun time. The sword attacks and his basic string have great coverage, and the mount is a great way to keep up the assault while getting out of danger by switching targets as you go into it. The range on the move is pretty ridiculous for a brawler, so you can use this as an aggressive movement option quite often. It's awesome. His hero up isn't anything to write home about, but it gets the job done. All in all, a solid and satisfying choice. Gamora is a brawler with 350 HP, 104 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 health and speed boost with a multi-hit aerial spin. 
Gamora is the only character who possesses a faster attack speed that doesn't take a huge cut to her overall damage to compensate. Her first power attack is just as fast, flooring everyone in front of her. If you ever need some breathing room, use her third to plow through enemies. All these attacks have great coverage on top of keeping her mobile. Gamora's hero up is a decent boss killer, given the right spacing, dealing 153 damage. It's not too close, not too far. This should be hard to land, right? Nah. If you just activate it right as she does the flip to finish off the basic string, you'll always land all three hits. Future Foundation Invisible Woman is a trapper with 300 HP, 144 total basic damage, two exploitative power attacks, and a Chadwalk hero up with super armor attached during its full duration. Most Chadwalks will raise your star meter for every hit after the initial one that activates it, and Suze is no exception. Given its damage, 13 to be exact, you'll earn enough to go invisible for most of the time it's active. Yes, she has stealth as her first power attack, meaning she can go into it faster than anyone else with that ability. But in addition to that, hits from a Chadwalk will not force you out of stealth like other attacks will, meaning that, even against bosses, you have about 45 seconds to freely deal damage while taking none. If you're quick enough, you may be able to loop this and take nearly no damage for an entire boss counter. If that doesn't sound good enough, she also has this. Annihilus is a hybrid with 275 HP, 87 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 3 in 1 health, damage, and armor boost with a summon hero up. Having one of the worst basic outputs in the game, as well as the second worst HP stat, you wouldn't expect Annie to be so high, but he has everything needed to compensate for these drawbacks. His basics are quick, evasive, and typically hit everything in front of him. His boost will supercharge these defenses, and he has a mass stun as his first power that you can use to load them up safely. This, combined with his hero up, providing 4 meat shields, ensures that Annihilus is never overwhelmed. Edgy Spider-Man is a brawler with 275 HP, 187 total basic damage, 2 exploitative power attacks, super armor, and a 2-in-1 speed and damage boost with a haywire light em up. Just like Annihilus, Spider-Man from Earth 8153's biggest weakness is his health. But instead of compensating defensively, Spidey is all offense, having the third strongest string of which you can make uninterruptible, along with a one-hit kill as his first power attack and a solid boss killer for a hero up. Spidey also has his own source of meat shields. The same power attack that activates his 2-in-1 will also summon Classic Wolverine to aid you. You can typically get up to 3 before one dies. All in all, Spidey may still struggle to stay alive, but the enemies will also be hurting just as much, if not worse. Now in a team setting, Spidey will summon one Logan for each squaddy by his side, making him easily top 3 in a full group. But unfortunately, he can't summon a massive army by his lonesome most of the time. Puny God is a hybrid with 350 HP, 93 total basic damage, 3 inconsistently complementary power attacks, a 4 in 1 boost, and a summon hero up. While below average, Loki's basics are mobile, with wide swings and a pattern that makes the most out of the two main archetypes. Its real weakness is that it is far too easy to turn your mind control slaves against you with some unintentional wax in their direction. This is hardly a deal breaker though, as the mind control move itself is your first power attack and will net you multiple allies in one use, so just spam it. For even more of a leg up, Loki gets every boost in the game in a move that already deals 40 damage on activation, for very decent crowd control. Speaking of, his third can be used to move through the large groups, most of the time. 
What's odd about Loki is, while every other summoner gets all their allies right off the bat, he gains his over time. The best of these is really Hawkeye, who won't join you until level 20. So, Avengers Loki's full potential is still a bit of an investment, but the initial attack is still immensely powerful, and the Chitauri can be helpful, obviously. Overall, Avengers Loki doesn't mesh well with himself if I'm being honest, but he has too many amazing tools at his disposal to fail. Robocop Spider-Man is a hit-and-run trapper with 275 HP, 84 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, and a light -em up Another low damage, low health character in S tier? Yes, you fool! Redamine your personal biases, because your boy has earned that spot as top 5's bodies. Use his stealth field to keep your health topped off. Then, line up his first power attack for a mass stun. Or, just whip out his third to come back with an advantage. Not that you need to do this given his great mobility and status effects in the basic string. His hero up is where he really shines. 93 damage per web ball? 2 web balls per each shot? Firing in each direction twice? The math is simple, folks. Now that's a lot of damage! It also helps that Peter is one of the few light em ups that have the bright idea to fire as he turns, but there's no wide blind spot. Biggie Tim Spider Man is a hit and run with 275 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 exploitative, and 2 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 intuple knockdown, and armor boost with an aerial spin hero up. Yet another low HP boy. He's a spider, what'd you expect? Big Time is the purest and maybe most satisfying example of a hit and run. He peppers on damage while leaping side to side to avoid taking any himself. But where he really stands out is having an intuple knockdown tied to his stealth activation, which has a hitbox. This makes the move all too safe to spam, so that not only is Peter never overwhelmed, he is rarely opposed. You can also come out of stealth after topping off his health with either of his other powers, which all now deal knockdown and deal extra damage. The only place he'll really suffer is the rush, and even then, he is thriving. Yo Ho Ho Deadpool is a Trapper Zoner hybrid with 300 HP, 137 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 health and damage boost, with an air strike hero up, and passive healing. Pirate Wade is a ranged character that benefits greatly from being played at a close range to maximize his damage. His cannon will deal 15 to anyone touching it until they are knocked away and off of it, or the cannon explodes for potentially 45 damage which is the standard for a finisher. This, on top of the extra damage during the arcing shots, really encourages this aggressive playstyle. However, he is slow and can be surrounded and overwhelmed for doing this. Thankfully, his powers will provide great crowd control to keep the tide of battle on your side. For tougher enemies, his storm of delicious food will take care of that with ease. A top tier selection of cuisine for a top tier character. How fitting. Uh-oh. I'm a bad, evil riddle man. Sure hope no pirate mutates attack me with hard shell tacos. Ugh, that'd be so bad. Ugh, I'd hate that so much. I'd hate to have a hailstorm of tacos shoved down my esophagus. Ugh. Winnie the Pooh is a brawler with 350 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 speed and armor boost, with a slam hero up. All three of Thanos' powers are mass stuns, his first being two lasers that can floor an entire area for quite some time. His first is a humongous denial to everyone who just dropped in looking to throw hands. His other tools are serviceable, with decent range and average damage but he could be dealing way less and do just fine given his utility. Spider-Man But Octopus is a brawler with 275 HP, 80 total basic damage, 1 complementary and 2 exploitative power attacks with an airstrike hero up. Unlike other heroes with an airstrike, Superior Spider-Man has the ability to move before the end of its duration, allowing him to get started on another rather quickly. Assuming you would even need it, as this is by far the most damaging airstrike available, consistently taking lone bosses out in a single use. His basics are quite meaty, outranging most of the opposition for a natural advantage against hordes. If he is getting overwhelmed, his first and third power attacks are great plow throughs. His first has a high priority of moving through targets, while his third emphasizes damaging them while you do so for slightly worse movement. 
Stark Industries brand Spider-Man is a brawler with 350 HP, 102 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, a 2-in-1 health and armor boost, with a slam hero up. His third power attack is a solid boss killer, dealing 174 in total. Using this instead of his ironically weaker, but still above average, hero up, leads Peter free to load up his boost with his remaining stars, which is a great backup in case you get interrupted. Or if you really want a speedrun, leaves you only one star away from hitting it again. His basics have great wide swings, just look at the LENGTH! So will never be hurting for stars either. Alex the Lion is a brawler trapper hybrid with 325 HP, 90 total basic damage, 2 exploitative power attacks, and an airstrike hero up. Though the overall damage output is below average, Mysterio's basics have great range and stats effects to make Horde Dispatchment easy money. Combine this with some stealth to keep your health topped off, and a mass stun, and you'll completely forget how useless his first power attack is. His hero up, like most airdrops, is an amazing boss killer. Loki is a trapper with 300 HP, 74 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 health and armor boost, with an airstrike hero up. Though he has one of the weakest basics in the game, the movement and finishing move do make him quite effective as a ranged character. Use his third power attack to knock enemies down and away sooner than that, if needed. His hero up is where he really shines, taking out most tougher enemies in a single use. Combine this with his boost and even the boss rush will struggle to finish you off. However, he calls in his big brother like a nerd, so be a Loki main at the risk of your street cred. Silver Surfer is a Zoner Trapper hybrid with 315 HP, 93 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, with a functional lunge hero up. Silver Surfer's basic output is weak, but the coverage is fantastic. You can also keep even the toughest enemies floored with his second power attack, completely negating the below average output as he won't be receiving much damage himself as he dishes out his own for free. In a horde, he can plow through enemies with his first power attack to grab consumables. In the boss rush, his launch hero up is one of the few that makes the character invincible during its duration. The damage on it is also one of the few that isn't booty piss poor. Wolverine is a brawler with 250 HP, 108 total basic damage, and a 2-in-1 health and damage boost tied to a burst hero up along with passive healing. You heard that right. Wolverine's boost, which are strong as hell by the way, his best crowd control option, and overall strongest attack are all the same move. It may not be fun, but the most viable way to play Wolverine is to spam his hero up like Zack Snyder uses the zoom on a camera. Obviously, being your 5 star attack, it's not like you can use this 69 times in a row. You'll have to rely on your basics, which isn't really an issue. The standard Wolverine attack chain has decent coverage and tends to break up crowds for easy horde management as you charge forward a little with each hit. In conclusion, Wolverine has a very streamlined moveset that is easy to use and succeed with. Miller Time Daredevil is a brawler with 315 HP, 127 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, an intuple knockdown boost, and an aerial spin hero up. As I said previously, all the Daredevils have solid basics, while the highlights being the overall coverage. Combine this with a long lasting intuple knockdown that you can boot up safely, and then some, Matt's mostly untouchable. And though they are weaker, he does have all the same power attacks as Shadowland. Stealth Suit Captain America is a brawler with 350 HP, 111 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 damage and armor boost, with a summon hero up. Though his damage is average, its range and stats effects will keep large crowds under control as Cap dwindles their numbers. At close range, his first power attack circles enemies multiple times for even more control, but you'll mostly use it to barrel through enemies and give yourself room to activate your boost or hero up, which have quite the startup. However, if that's not your style, you can use his third power attack, which is a mass stun, to also queue up these attacks without taking too much damage for doing so. Cap's reliance on his powers is a deficit, but it's not a deal breaker by any means. His hero up is a summon that might just be the longest lasting summon in the game. 
While Cap has little answers for bosses, this summon allows him to amass an army to take them on for him with little danger to himself given the rest of his kit. Jane Spader is a hybrid with 350 HP, 120 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, a 2 in 1 armor and damage boost with a slam hero up. Ultron's best way to avoid taking damage is his basic attacks. Whenever he's suspended in the air, most enemies can't reach him, but they will stand right under him waiting for him to land, perfectly lining up the mass crowd control finisher. This is a solid foundation that already makes Ultron a solid character. His first power attack is a mass stun, not only super useful and inexpensive, but covers you to safely load up your boost. His third is a more powerful variant of his fifth basic with less coverage, only getting your front, use it as a way to thin the herd in a pinch. Ultron's evasiveness is not as solid against bosses who have more generous hitboxes to smack him with, but his hero up is a great boss killer, so you won't be overwhelmed for long. Future Foundation Thing is a brawler with 350 HP, 164 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Has all the tools that starter character should have, then puts on steroids. Solid, A tier basic damage, and good crowd control with 2 get off moves. Use his first to save a star and still be in range, or his second to keep enemies away while you thin the herd because it sends further. Then his third power attack deals the average damage of a hero up, and his actual hero up is a stellar boss killer. Now, all three things do have one drawback, in that the uppercut in their string does have a tendency not to connect. The damage you'll be doing regardless of landing this is still pretty high, so this is negligible. But I know someone in the comments would whine and carry on if I didn't say anything. Yeah, you know who you are. You still on for pizza Friday? Get it? It's funny because I'm implying I know my hecklers personally. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it, it's just a joke. It, it's not. It's not true. I don't hang out with people that mock me relentlessly. I would. Uh, I would never do that. My friendships are very healthy. Abomination is a brawler with 350 HP, 70 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a health boost, and a multi-hit slam. Abomination is the only character to not have 5 basic moves due to a bug causing the finisher to never come out. Because of this, he's effectively the weakest in the whole game. But this is his only weakness, and he has all the tools necessary to make you forget it's even there. His hero up alone more than carries the weight with quick attacks that leaves everyone stunned, then knocks them away. Just one use will nearly take out a tough goon. Combine this with his ram and health boost, and the only place A-Bomb really struggles is the rush. Well, that and a fight with himself. Discount Gilbert Gottfried is a brawler with 350 HP, 105 total basic damage, one complimentary power attack, an armor boost, and an airstrike hero up. Impossible Man has slow, average damage basics, but his second power attack will allow him time to get his string started unopposed. Plus, the wide swings will give you quick access to his much better boss killer hero up that carries him through even the boss rush. Tony Coolest Real Name Masters is a brawler with 350 HP, 86 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 3 in 1 in tuple knockdown health and armor boost with a slam hero up. Taskmaster's hitbox on his 3-in-1 boost activation makes the move very safe to spam. Even if it didn't, his first power attack will plow through enemies and would provide the necessary breathing room. When it's active, the first two sword swings alone will make him untouchable. The actual damage buff will turn his third power attack into a mini hero up and his actual hero up into a decent boss killer. Obviously, Tasky relies heavily on his boost and can be ineffective without them but has all the tools needed to activate it as much as necessary and keep the advantage. Spicy Phoenix is a hit and run trapper hybrid with 325 HP, 88 total basic damage, 1 complimentary and 2 exploitative power attacks, a health boost, and a burst hero up. While DP Jean is one of the weakest in the game, she has so many ways to deny taking damage. The best way to play her is to use her basic string at a range with her health boost loaded. Anyone that gets too close will be bapped away with little to no harm to Jean, who would just heal anyway. You can always keep a comfortable distance away using her first power attack, which will also help keep bosses off of her. Agent Coulson is a trapper with 300 HP, 147 total basic damage, 3 complimentary power attacks, and a summon hero up. 
Agent Coulson is a solid ranged character best played on the front lines. With good get off me moves towards the end of his string, his arcing shot and grenade really encourages being at point blank as well in order to maximize damage. His car has decent horizontal range in addition to hitting aligned enemies, knocking them down for an easy advantage. His third power attack acts as a quick hero up if you don't want to use a summon just yet, and said summon is solid, helping with the boss rush tremendously. Tuxedo Thing is a brawler with 350 HP, 144 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. It's everything we've seen before, just much weaker. However, Thing's fundamentals and tools are all you really need regardless of damage. Thing is exactly like his Tuxedo variant, but with much less dapper drip. 90 Cyclops is a zoner with 300 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and a burst hero up. With less boost and damage than his stronger variant, Scott has a bit more trouble with bosses. Luckily, his damage boost lasts for quite a while, so even if he relies on it, you don't have to spam it. Overall, you'll still come out on top even in the boss rush, and his lower damage is no issue against tougher enemies at all since he can just stunlock them. Jared Leto is a brawler with 350 HP, 104 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and mass mind control. Morbius has a well-balanced mass mind control. I'd go so far as to say it's the only non sh one. It's weak enough that your army won't immediately die helping you, but not so weak that you can't use it for pure damage in a boss fight. Now, his range will likely get them to turn on you, as it's hard to not hit your allies, but the range on the hero up itself will give you so many that you'll have a lot of expendables regardless. If anything, it helps avoid the no consumable supply trade-off that some mind controllers have. Speaking of his basics, while average, they are quick, mobile, and the status effect at the end ensures hordes are a non-issue. His powers also provide great crowd control if needed. You can't catch me, I'm the fastest thing alive. Hmm, I was thinking about why so many in the radical left participate in speedrunning. Huh? The reason is the left's lack of work ethic. What? What? Go fast, rather than do it right. And in a Petersonian sense. Petersonian? To elevate alternative sexual archetypes in the marketplace. Fastest mutant. Father, what the f*** are you talking about? You're a beta male, Pietro. Quicksilver is a hit and run brawler with 275 HP, 99 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a speed boost, and a haywire light em up. Quicksilver is a hit and run with way too much pep in his step, often running so far that he can't continue his combo. This can be frustrating, but it's still very effective at avoiding damage. His hero up will more than make up the damage difference with its sheer power hitting a maximum of 14 times for 216 damage and Pietro will likely take none himself during its duration. Wow. That was just 6 inches shy of a quarter of the cast in S tier. Maybe the game is more balanced than I thought. Or maybe I just played really well. Perhaps twas I, who was the S tier all along. No? Okay. Just short of greatness, we have the A-tiers. These characters do take some optimization on your part to succeed, and will definitely need to achieve the next milestone to get adamantium consistently, but will still really only struggle in the rush or against tougher goons respectively. It is really weird to see Iron Man 2020 eat against a dude with a stick, but then one-shot winter-flavored Bigfoot. Either way, still a solid selection of characters, but their weaknesses are more visible. Towards the very top, we will see characters that I was capable of getting S tier results with, but it felt heavily based on RNG. So, I dot them points to compensate for potential bad luck. Otherwise, we have characters with solid, viable movesets, or characters with at least one strong do it all move that can exploit a few challenges. Tigra is a brawler with 350 HP, 86 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a functional lunge hero up. Though she doesn't have passive healing or iconic drip like the other high-ranking lungers in A tier, I'd still argue Tigra is the better of the three. Being more mobile in her basics, and being jam-packed with solid crowd control and escape options that complement the very useful hero up. Appropriation Wolverine is a brawler with 250 HP, 107 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, 
a damage boost, a functional launch hero up, and passive healing. Samurai Wolverine is the second strongest Wolvie when it comes to his basic string. It has all the benefits of the base moves, but with much more evasive strikes. If you ever do need to stop attacks coming your way completely, his first power attack has you covered, and his third may be the most powerful plow through move in the game. His health is rather low, but you'll at least be making the most out of his passive during the duration of the lunge to mitigate that. Venom flavored Spider-Man is a brawler with 315 HP, 111 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and a functional lunge hero up. There's a reason so many Spidey basic strings are built off of defaults. The wide swings are capable of covering you even from behind, and the front flip forward is solid, free crowd control. However, what really elevated the string was the flip kick at the end, allowing you to loop the chain with little opposition. The web pull is fine, but definitely the worser variant. Not to worry though, there's an even stronger version of the kick as Black Suit's first power. And the classic web swing for his second is great for getting up and out of danger with yet another powerful kick. His launch is on the weak side, but in exchange for no damage, still worth it. Sebastian the Crab is a Zoner Trapper hybrid with 350 HP, 84 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 damage and armor boost with a burst and light em up. Winter Soldier ironically deals with bosses better than higher level goons. Zero Up can easily deal over 300 damage and take the big boys out quickly, but against goons they'll be floored and pushed away by the first hit and likely only eat 100 damage. His basics are too low damage to compensate, but deal with hordes quite well, especially given his movement. Use his second power to get some breathing room, armor up, increase your damage, and hit three waves of aligned enemies. If you'd prefer to do more damage for less utility, his third is a stronger sniper shot. While it hits aligned foes as well, it doesn't apply knockdown like similar moves. Spider-Man Not Spider-Man is a brawler with 315 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, a 2-in-1 speed and armor boost, with an airstrike hero up. Remember a couple entries ago where I sucked the soul out of default Spidey's dick over his basic string? Yeah. Forget all about that schmuck because this clone is a real deal. Instead of three web shots directed at a single target, Ben's fourth move continues to play into the strength of the others, and springboards forward hitting many more enemies than Pete. I know we already talked about Otto, but this is the superior variant of the default Spidey combo. His first power attack is a sweep kick that will hit all around you. Use it to stun lock, and no goon can oppose you. His hero up is an airstrike of web balls, each dealing 93 damage each. I was able to constantly hit up to 4 and actually got S tier results in the rush because of it, however, I couldn't influence this at all, and had to acknowledge that this was pure luck. If RNGesus really doesn't like you, it's possible you could deal a below average 93, or even nothing at all, and I did have to take that into account when ranking him. Still a solid character regardless. Future Foundation Dr. Doom is a Zoner Trapper hybrid with 300 HP, 105 total basic damage, 1 complementary and 2 exploitative power attacks, and an airstrike hero up. His ranged attacks will hit multiple enemies, then he'll plow through the crowd with his finisher to pick up any consumables. Though they are slow, he also has 2 power attacks that will help keep enemies off of him also. The wall of lightning will hit the whole room, sometimes dealing damage multiple times as a move carts your foe away. This will also knock them down and secure Doom's advantage. His second power is a Chad Walk, which will obviously provide some control and allow Vic a safe way to gather food. His hero up is a solid boss killer, but the end lag can cause Doom to take just as much damage as he's dissing out, resulting in a death or two. Nova is a Zoner Trapper hybrid with 325 HP, 89 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a an unique Gravity Well hero up. This hero up will floor enemies and bring them to Nova, which essentially allows you to focus all your attention on a boss because the food will constantly be coming to you. I don't think I need to explain how regularly having a full health bar for free with same day delivery makes an encounter easy, right? Anyone left alive will be on the ground for quite a bit, giving Ryder more targets to fill the meter even faster and spam this over and over. The knockdown on it is so long that even without additional targets, I was still pretty close to locking tougher goons and came out both encounters unscathed. However, Richie's overall damage output is still quite low, and a boss encounter with little to no goons to exploit, he will struggle. Mario is a hit and run zoner hybrid with 300 HP, 150 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 speed and armor boost, with a multi hit burst hero up. Star Lord is one of the best zoners in the game 
with tools to be effective at any range and effortlessly move through both. You can maximize his high tier damage up close, then use Outlaw Charge or his hero up to keep Quill from being overwhelmed. Keep enemies at bay with his Bola. It only stuns a single enemy, but its duration is quite long. His boss management could be better, but the way each tool meshes with the rest of the kit is still satisfyingly good. I feel bad that the character himself has to wear that helmet all the time. They clearly didn't get the rights to Pratt's mutton chops. Poor dude will probably have to live the rest of his life jamming food into a non-existent mouthpiece and pray some slips through. COVID Iron Man is a ranged hybrid with 275 HP, 109 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 3-in-1 intuple knockdown health and armor boost with a multi-hit light em up. Overall survivability will be an issue for this character. How fitting. He's best played by using his evasive basics. Then, after flying out of the danger zone, load up your boost for the advantage. You can also opt to fly back in with a mass stun or quickly dispatch with a powerful tri-beam. In the rush, his hero up is an absolute godsend, quickly taking out all threats before they can threaten Stark. This is not as useful, and could even be considered detrimental, against tougher goons who are not as easily exploited. It's all too easy for them to take advantage of 2020's low HP. Venat is a brawler with 375 HP, 122 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a health boost, and a slam hero up. With average damage across the board, Andy can receive a bit of a beating in tougher encounters, but he's also quite quick and the forward leap in his hero up ensures a boss cannot push him out of range. Overall, Anti-Venom will be overwhelming enemies as much as they can him. Use his crowd control and health boost to tip the balance in your favor. Lizard is a brawler with 350 HP, 113 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, a 3-in-1 intuple knockdown health and armor boost, and a slam hero up. Lizard's basics are fast, mobile, and cover a great range. Throw on his boost and he'll have no trouble with even the toughest goon. Though it is safe to spam, it relies on this heavily, given that his hero up is below average without it, leading to a weak spot when it comes to the rush. Enchantress is a Zoner Trapper hybrid with 300 HP, 115 total basic damage, 1 exploitative power attack, a 3 in 1 intuple knockdown health and armor boost, with a burst and summon hero up. Enchantress's slow attack speed will leave her to get overwhelmed quite easily. Luckily, her power attacks are perfectly suited to not only keep enemies off of her, but keep them from attacking completely with a mass stun attack and area sweeping sorcery beams for a mass knockdown. And that's before she even applies the end tuple to further deny opposition. Speaking of, use the durations of these powers to safely load up her boots, as the windup is quite long, with no attack attached. This property can make it hard to rely on in boss fights, but she still has one more ability to keep that heat off of her, Ymir Inserter, the two biggest meat shields you could possibly ask for. Joe Fixit is a hybrid with 350 HP, 127 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 armor and damage boost with a slam hero up. Hordes are no match for the Great Goliath Gangster, with 3 get off me moves and a strain that goes through several foes. However, he has low answers to tougher encounters, relying heavily on his raw damage and tanky nature. Though that can take you pretty far until the boss rush, his boost specifically being quite safe on activation and nearly stunlocking tougher goons. Mr. Fantastic is a brawler with 350 HP, 79 total basic damage, three complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Though much weaker, this variant still has all of the solid tools that made Foundation practically untouchable by goons. Plus, this one doesn't look stupid, so... much better. Arachne is a brawler with 325 HP, 100 total basic damage, two exploitative power attacks, and a slam hero up. Arachne has solid basics that will constantly keep battles against hordes in her favor. Using her first or third power attack, she can mass stun and cement that advantage. Her third power is specifically making short work of even the toughest goon. However, the actual damage, while higher than your typical third power attack, is only an okay boss killer, but still doing better than her hero up. She's a bit of a specialist, and will struggle when facing against several bosses at once. 
as they can ignore her many stuns. Mystique is a hybrid with 265 HP, 117 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a haywire light em up. Mystique's main claim to fame is her hero up. She focuses fire directly in front of her, so as long as you're facing the boss, you'll take a good chunk out of their health. Her power attacks will help control the crowd, with two knocking them down and one plowing through them. This isn't how Mystique's powers actually work, but I'll take the utility. Her low HP holds her back and will usually be the root cause of any deaths though she will generally have no issues keeping enemies off of her. Astonishing Cyclops is a zoner with 300 HP, 135 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, an armor boost, and a burst hero up. I want to dock him points for being 4 fifths of a ranged character that slides into melee range halfway through, but given the mass knockdown move beforehand and the range of the moves right after, it's actually one of the most effective hybrid strings in the game. If anything, this move is a great way to gain range for your other attacks, such as his Hero Up, which is a stunning attack with solid duration, getting Scott through the higher level encounters. However, its damage is below average and the move itself has a lengthy end animation, making him weaker against bosses. However, the range will at least ensure you take out each boss at around the same time before you eat too many deaths. Goliath is a brawler with 350 HP, 108 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and a slam hero up. Has balance damage in his basic string opposed to exponential. I can't say that word today, I'm just gonna run with that. Being strong from the start at the cost of not having as strong of a finisher as a typical hero. All these moves will deal radial damage and most have a mass knockdown. This leads Bill with little damage heading his way and plenty of opportunities to load up his damage boost tastefully. However, Goliath depends on these properties to succeed and will struggle slightly in the boss rush being far too slow without the knockdown to cover him for it. His hero up, while a decent boss killer with the boost, needs him a sitting duck due to the animation at the end. Captain Murka is a brawler with 350 HP, 164 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and an aerial spin. Captain America is a character with high damage across the board, taking out swarms of enemies in just a single combo and bosses with just a few hero ups. However, he can be easily overwhelmed not having many tools to prevent taking as much damage as he deals. His second power attack has nice pushback that should make his boost safe to load up, but the actual animation is so long that you'll be swarmed again by the end. Use his third to get some much needed breathing room, though you're vulnerable towards the end so use it wisely. Too long did listen, Cap is a powerhouse with a solid foundation but doesn't have strong complements to the overall kit. Oh, can't forget to mention he sounds like a 50s carnival barker for some reason. By far his greatest drawback, bar none. Vanilla Phoenix is a trapper with 275 HP, 106 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a health boost, and a stick and move hero up. While her tools aren't as solid as Dark's, lacking the Chad Walk and Flame Brush, White Phoenix is the strongest of the three variants, making her far less reliant on a health boost than the other two. She can struggle against bosses, but her hero up does help avoid them while unfortunately dealing below average damage. Sabretooth is a brawler with 315 HP, 113 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 health and speed boost, with a slam hero up, and passive healing. Sabretooth is mostly carried by his string. It starts off weak and inconsequential, some of the worst in the game in fact, then becomes multiple strong mass knockdowns or pop-up attacks. These moments to breathe give Creed some time to abuse his passive healing that you can then kick into overdrive with his health boost. He kind of relies on this boost, but load it up after his headbutt and you'll be safe in even the toughest goon encounter to do so. His hero up is slightly below average, this and the reliance on status effects give him little answers to bosses, but his health boost will still carry him through the rush. Falcon is a brawler trapper hybrid with 350 HP, 100 total basic damage, and a multi-hit aerial spin. Falcon doesn't have too much going for him. His basics are serviceable, the coverage giving him stars rather quickly, but it's still very low in pure damage. His real strength comes in his hero up, being one of the best multi-hitters available. He'll hit for 180, which is already a solid boss killer, but then enemies will take 180 again from Red Wing. What the hell is Sam feeding him? The beak is hitting harder than literal gods! Colossus is a brawler with 350 HP, 91 total basic damage, and an uninterruptible Chadwalk hero up. It's all in the hero up, Sparky. 
This puppy will do your crowd control, your damage, your defense, your taxes, please your wife, pay your mortgage, make you a star, baby, just sign here. If you don't believe me, keep in mind these two little shit killed nearly everyone else we're going to be talking about, and look at how Peter deals with them. Straight up bully! However, as a trade off to one of the most long lasting and powerful walks in the game, it does not fill your star meter, which means you will have to rely on your less than stellar basics. They still do the job, but are quite slow. Also, to maximize your damage, you need to give yourself carpal tunnel, so I won't blame you if you pass up the Shadow Wiggle for other options. Shadow Cat is a hit and run brawler with 275 HP, 100 total basic damage, one very exploitative power attack, and a burst hero up. Been a bit since we talked about an exploit. Let's talk about an exploit. So, Kitty's kit is decent, her string being very reminiscent of Spidey with the white swings. If anything, a little better than his given the mobility. But the reason she is up this high is because she gains stars back from one of her power attacks. This is obviously a bug, but it makes one of the best hit and run options in the game indefinitely spammable. God, this game is funny sometimes. Her overall damage is weak though, so this is a mere stalling tactic in the rush at best. So you're stuck with being an untouchable freight train only most of the time. Squirrel Girl is a brawler with 350 HP, 82 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and a burst hero up. Tagline is unbeatable for a reason. Squirrel Girl has a plethora of mass knockdown attacks, particularly her damage boost activation, making it very safe and useful to spam. While this doesn't help her hero up much, the knockdown of each attack from the swarm will help her take tougher goons head on. She really only struggle in the rush. Modok is a trapper with 300 HP, 143 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, and a mass mind control. Modok has a mass mind control hero up, making even the toughest goon fights a breeze. However, he by far struggles with the no consumables dropped while mind control issue the most. And with a below average health stat, Monarch cannot afford to make that trade off often. Luckily, his super spin can pick up the slack when his hero up wouldn't be a wise move. His other power attacks are also solid get off moves, giving Modok the edge against hordes. Overall, a solid villain character. Benadryl Slumber Crap is a trapper with 300 HP, a 2 total basic damage, and a meaty stunner hero up. Doctor Strange is an incredibly flawed trap character carried by his hero up. Its range is incredible, its damage above average, and it has a long dance effect attached. This allows him to excel in any situation he can use it in, even the boss rush. However, not only are his basics weak and slow, but they're also uncancelable by most options during the 4th and 5th attack, limiting your control and leaving Strange vulnerable. His most useful power attacks take far too long to come out only to affect one target, and his third is effective but takes too long getting foes off of Strange as well. You're best off using his hero up and praying you're not caught in a jam during the end of his string or commit to never using more than the third attack. Insert transition here. Oh sh Either just short of A, or just barely crawling out of C, we have the B tier. These characters mostly excelled in some areas, but not as well as those above them. You'll probably need to be at least level 15, or even 20, to succeed consistently. In this tier, we will mostly see average characters that can exploit bosses, or average characters that have no exploitable weaknesses of their own that they can't easily compensate for. Blade is a Brawler Trapper hybrid with 350 HP, 130 total basic damage, 2 complementary and consistently exploitative power attacks, and an aerial spin hero up. Oh, did you say Blade? I thought you meant Glaive! No, but seriously, Blade's hero up is the star of the show here, dealing anywhere from 400 to 600 damage to bosses for extremely quick kills. Don't forget about his power attacks though. His second and third have a unique sticky property to them that can make quick work of hordes. Essentially, the garlic or bomb, depending on what you use, will damage whoever it attaches to prior to blowing up. 
If another enemy touches it, it will transfer over to that target and apply the initial damage again. The explosive will do this multiple times as long as another enemy gets close. The nature of these attacks are finicky and inconsistent, sticking anywhere from just once to four times, so don't rely too heavily on them. However, they will complement Blade's basic string perfectly when they do work. New Spider-Man is a hit and run brawler with 315 HP, 88 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, and a multi-hit aerial spin. We've already talked about a lot of spiders, and yet somehow, we haven't even covered half of them. Why are there so many? Miles has all the great tools of the original, solid basic string, and a hero up that can hit 2-4 to four times, but where he's a cut above is his invisibility naturally giving Miles better survivability than his predecessor. OG Spider-Man is a brawler with 325 HP, 88 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 speed and armor boost, with a multi-hit aerial spin. But don't count old Pete out just yet. That hero up still has the potential to deal 440 damage and takes tougher goons for a ride. It's not like you need stealth to succeed with his character. Vanilla Spider-Man is just like first appearance but with less Ditko Drip. So objectively worse. Oni-Chan is a trapper with 275 HP, 128 total basic damage, 1 exploitative power attack, a 2-in-1 damage and armor boost with a burst hero up. Onslaught is a character full of good tools, but they just don't work together. He has an additional attack to his basic finisher that only hits at close range. But his low HP, speed, and lack of health boost implies he should never be at that range. Additionally, several of his basics are likely to miss at close range as well. However, his only get off me moves are at the end of his string. The rest will only keep enemies at bay, which are so slow everyone will be getting in your face anyway. So if he is terrible up close and barely decent at a range, why is he up here? That mass mind control and powerful damage boosted hero up carries all day, every day, not counting Tuesdays. Plus, when he does land his full combo, it's quite powerful. Comic Accurate Wolverine is a brawler with 250 HP, 113 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 damage and health boost with a slam hero up and passive healing. Avenging Wolverine takes everything that makes default work and ruins it. His hero up and boost are separate moves now, meaning he has to load up the buff, then perform the hero up. Which you will have to do, because the hero up itself does less damage than default did otherwise. The boost attack is also worse in general, adding a uncancelable animation at the end. Sure, it stuns to compensate, but as you know, bosses don't stun. Basically what happens when AV Wolvie is dealing with several bosses is you forego the boost to get a hero up off before you die, which ultimately doesn't deal enough damage to save you from several deaths, as that low HP will start to become an issue. But most of Avenging's downsides are only if you compare him to the original. He still has that solid string of basic moves, his in particular being the strongest of the Wolverines, and his other powers play well into them. His first power attack being great for keeping on the move, and his third being an excellent get off tool. A downgrade, but still a solid character. And honestly, much more fun to use. Wonder Man is a hybrid with 300 HP, 119 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, super armor, and a burst hero up. Wonder Man is a perfectly average character at first glance, but has several tools that put him one tier above. His basics are chock full of knockdown properties on top of flying just out of reach of some enemies begging for a clear advantage against goons. Additionally, his first power attack flies through several enemies for decent crowd control. However, it is important to keep in mind that these are all front-focused moves. Simon's backside is rather vulnerable. Even so, his armor boost has this covered with its AoE and makes it so he won't stagger when going to use his third power attack, which is a decent boss killer, though you will still have a reasonable amount of difficulty of using this move against multiple bosses. Mustard Man is a hit and run with 275 HP, 114 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Iron Man Midas has the maneuverability to avoid taking any damage as he's dishing it out during his basic string. There are also plenty of opportunities in them, such as mass knockdowns or stuns, to use his other moves without being attacked during their startup for a free heavy hit. Although Midas' second power and his hero up startup cannot be negated entirely given its length. But you might get surrounded anyway. 
The hero up itself is a decent boss killer, but against several bosses, he's just a little too slow and can't avoid taking damage effectively enough to completely avoid getting the paint scratched. America Machine is a zoner with 300 HP, 90 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, a damage boost, and a light em up. Iron Patriot is a slightly worse version of War Machine Electric Boogaloo, but he does excel in one area more than his counterpart. This roadie is slightly weaker and doesn't have a DOT, his hero ultimately makes him worse against high level goons as well. But the move is fantastic at taking out bosses, usually dealing around 300 damage. With great power comes great depression Spider-Man is a brawler with trapping and hit and run traits. 275 HP, 72 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, and a multi-hit burst. Being the weakest Spidey with one of the worst HP stats in the game, Noir has a lot to make up for. But he has great crowd control with his flip kick and is unhittable during his third star lunge. So waves will be a non-issue and he can sometimes avoid death in tougher encounters. However, you are likely to die regardless if not narrowly surviving by the skin of your teeth. Is what I would say if he didn't have an odd tendency to become unhittable after using his hero up. This is clearly a bug that I don't see lasting long. So to not completely date this ranking, I'm going to keep him here. But until that's fixed, he's easily top 5. This effect will remain for the entirety of a stage as long as you do not use his third power attack or hero up. I believe this is something to do with his hurtbox shifting during these attacks and maybe not fully returning back to normal afterwards? Not sure, but abuse it while you can. Fashion Blind Daredevil is a brawler with 350 HP, 127 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and an aerial spin. What if Daredevil was worse? What if, instead of Coca-Cola or Pepsi, you opted to drink RC? Instead of a lovely day at the beach, you decided to wake up in an alley with no memory of how you got there. That's what classic Daredevil feels like. You are trading the boost that makes you nigh untouchable for 35 more hit points. You traded the move that prevented you from taking any damage for more health for when you inevitably do take more damage because you no longer have that tool. Still solid basics and fundamentals though. Storm is a trapper with 300 HP, 110 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and a chadwalk hero up. Storm has some of the greatest range and stage control in the game. She's meant to be played at a range, switching targets to keep everyone at bay. These attacks actually push the enemies back, so you should have no problem with this. Though you can always use her second power attack for some more room if needed. Her first power attack is amazing. It applies a storm cloud to a single target that will call down a lightning strike in time with storm's basics. This means that the target is never out of her range. You can also attack a storm clouded enemy directly to use the lightning like a damage boost. The move itself is rather slow, however, so it's not wise to just apply it willy-nilly. Her hero up, as I said, is a Chadwalk, which is rather spammable as you'll get stars back with it, but Storm is not immune to knockback during its duration, so it's not as good a move against bosses. In fact, Storm has trouble in general with them as they can't be affected by her status effects, resulting in a lower placement despite her utility against other enemies. Emma, definitely not a stripper named Frost, is a trapper with 300 HP, 96 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, and a stunner hero up. A trap character with a twist! Instead of blasting foes away, you mind control them when they get too close. Because all your basics only hit a single target, you won't have to worry about turning them against you. If you do need to hit more than one target, her second power attack has you covered. Her mass stun is also helpful against goons. But given that stunning and mind control is her specialty, she is not good against bosses, taking a decent hit in the rush. Brown on Brown Wolverine is a brawler with 250 HP, 94 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 health and damage boost, with a slam hero up and passive healing. A slightly weaker version of Avenging, who naturally experience more issues with bosses, but still solid.
John Mulaney Spider-Man is a brawler with 315 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, and 2 and 1 speed and armor boost with an aerial spin. Spider-Ham has all the main tools of Ben Riley, but trades the airstrike for a defaults here one, minus the extra hits unfortunately. While this does mean Porker can't hit as hard, you will be more consistent. A solid choice if you don't want to mess with the RNG. Black Suit Spider Girl is a brawler with 325 HP, 110 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, and a stunner hero up. Black Suit Spider Girl keeps the trend of good Spidey basic strength strong, having classic big swings and status effects. Speaking of status effects, Mayday specializes in stunning. With a quick first power attack that's nearly spammable on a single enemy, lack of targets compensated by the speed but could still be better, and her second flooring all enemies around her. However, if you need some breathing room instead, her third plows through enemies. You can also use it as a boss killer by landing all three hits. Her hero up is the best crowd control option of all. 80 damage for a mass stun that lasts basically until you get another online. However, this does make her strongest move one of the weakest in the game, meaning she'll struggle with bosses. Spider Girl has all the same stats as her black suit variant, but with a slightly weaker second power attack. It's the stupid mass that really makes her the worst of the two, though. Bob Ross is a brawler with 350 HP, 103 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, a 2 in 1 health and damage boost, and a slam hero up. Red Hulk is carried by his second power attack, which is a mass stun that grants him a damage and health boost, more than making up for his other two. His basic string has great coverage, dealing radial damage all around, but it's much too slow for too little damage even with a boost, to ensure victory over higher level enemies. With a boost, his hero up is an okay boss killer, but he doesn't necessarily excel against them. Overall, he really butts up hordes, and while he doesn't thrive elsewhere, he still stands his ground. Edgier Psylocke is a brawler with 350 HP, 92 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 health and armor boost, with a burst hero up. X-Force Psylocke is a slightly above average character with no overt weaknesses. Her boost does have hefty startup, but you can use her first power attack to stagger everyone within range to load them a bit safer and maximize your HP return. Lessening the damage you take will also help keep you in the fight even against high level enemies, but only barely. When it comes to bosses, she has little answers. Actually, Russian Black Widow is a brawler with 325 HP, 79 total basic damage, 1 complimentary power attack, and a multi-hit burst. And as a veteran member of NoFap, the last thing I want to do is burst. <laughs> Black Widow is a character who, on paper, should be one of the worst in the game, but in practice, has a decent kit to divide and conquer. Her basic string, while weak, is decently quick and pushes through the crowd to keep her from being overwhelmed. Use her first power attack to accomplish this more quickly and get to some consumables. Her hero up does this on a wide scale, pushing everyone away from her with a solid knockdown attached. Against bosses, this can hit up to 8 times to chip a good chunk of the HP bar. The damage per hit is rather low however, so don't expect a one shot. In conclusion, Black Widow is a solid, fundies focused, average character with a hero up that will tip fights out of her element back in her favor. 90's Daredevil is a brawler with 350 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 complimentary power attack, a 3-in-1 intuple knockdown speed and armor boost with an aerial spin. Armored Daredevil is fairly balanced, having average damage both in basics and hero up. He also lacks any outright weaknesses, other than needing to use his other powers to safely load up his boost, but Matt does not heavily rely on these, so the drawback is minimal. Set boost make tougher goons a breeze. Beta Male Bill is a zoner brawler hybrid with 350 HP, 117 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and 2 in 1 armor and damage boost with a multi hit ricochet. Beta Ray Bill is the only Thor to use the hammer as Odin intended, hitting multiple enemies both on the initial throw and on the way back to his hand. Unlike the other stinky Thors, he does this in his basics instead of a power attack, giving you a mass stun free of charge. His first power attack is instead a more horizontal mass stun, complementing the more vertical one. His third sacrifices that status effect for more damage, 
though it still pushes enemies away. His second is a decent boost that, when combined with his hero up, makes a good boss killer. He's still a bit of a sitting duck, but the additional hits and speed makes it pretty good still. Beast is literally the savior of all mutant kind and needs some more credit for curing the legacy virus, gosh darn it. And a brawler with 350 HP, 103 total basic damage, one complimentary power attack, and a multi-hit dysfunctional lunge hero up. Beast doesn't have too much going for him. Average basics with average coverage and few stats effects. But he does have a quick knockdown move. Though being the third power, you can't rely on it too heavily. What really carries Hank is his hero up. While he can be attacked during his pounce, it hits for another three times when returning to his original position for some solid boss killing. Canadian brand Hulk is a brawler with 350 HP, 108 total basic damage, one exploitative power attack, and a slam hero up. Sasquatch has all the radial damage you'd expect from a big guy, making Horde Dispatchment easy, but also the slowness of a big boy with none of the big boy damage. However, his second power attack has solid crowd control and decent damage, flooring every one hit. This makes even higher level foes no biggie, though his overall utility against bosses is minimal. Destroyer is a hybrid with 350 HP, 96 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 health and damage boost with a light em up. Boring, but effective. His basics, while below average in damage, constantly push enemies away dealing damage but receiving little. This combined with his ground quake and arc beam make him well suited against hordes. In harder fights, the destroyer will rely heavily on his boost to get by, but having an attack attached to its activation that also knocks down foes makes it more safe to spam. However, even with a boost, his hero up is slow and deals below average damage. Tom Hardy, but it's an old married couple, is a brawler with 375 HP, 122 total basic damage, two complimentary power attacks, and a burst hero up. Each basic move covers a wide range with solid stats effects to finish off the chain and give Eddie the advantage. Combine this with the wide coverage on his second power attack along with his third to move through the crowd and hordes won't be a problem. His basics are also balanced in damage, hitting harder from the start instead of cranking up in intensity at the cost of a slightly weaker final hit. This damage and range will give Venom access to his hero up rather quickly. The move itself is still below average though, so he can still struggle in higher level encounters. Captain America, but Drippent, is a brawler with 350 HP, 164 total basic damage, 2 complimentary power attacks, and an airstrike hero up. Captain America, Super Soldier, has a strong A tier string, but has no status effects until the very last move. This will leave him to get knocked around pretty hard by higher level goons but his hero up still gets the job done quite adequately before being hit too hard. Against hordes, his second and third power attack has great crowd control, rolling out of danger or separating the group and charging through them for some breathing room. God, why are there so many? Discount Adam West is a hit and run brawler with 275 HP, 81 total basic damage, two complimentary power attacks, and two in one damage and armor boost with a slam hero up. Nighthawk will depend on his damage boost due to his average output and low HP, but with no attack attached, it's not safe to spam. However, the boost itself lasts quite a while, and Hawk's hero up is already above average, so he doesn't depend on the buff as much as others. His basic string and third power attack helps evade attacks and bamboozle even the toughest foe, but overall, Nighthawk doesn't have anything outstanding about him to really make up for his deficits and be any higher on the list. Ghost Fawns is a zoner with 340 HP, 83 total basic damage, 3 complimentary power attacks, and a multi-hit spinning burst. Despite having mostly ranged attacks, his actual attack range is rather short. Classic Ghost Rider wants to be on the front lines, and for good reason. His chain whips and all of his power attacks really control a crowd. Combine this with his stupendous range on his hero up, and he just compensates for the below average damage, sorry. Still respect to a fellow chat in a leather jacket when I see one though. It's not a phase. Surfer is a trapper with 315 HP, 98 total basic damage, one complimentary power attack, and a burst hero up. Has less crowd control than his shinier variant, instead treading them off for single target effects, both of which aren't really going to be helpful when Emo Norn gets surrounded, 
The second has a decent stun duration, but Dark Surfer isn't going to be dealing enough damage to thin the herd by the time an enemy recovers. However, he still has the dash attack, the knockdown that will carry him even through the toughest encounters. The movement on it also helps during a boss rush. His beam attacks will still cover a wide area, giving you stars often. However, with a different hero up, you can't avoid taking damage completely like Silver can. His basic string also has a terrible blind spot at point blank, and he doesn't have much to keep people out of that blind spot. Moon Kite is a brawler with zoner traits, 350 HP, 111 total basic damage, 3 nichely complementary power attacks, and an aerial spin hero up. Unlike most characters that are carried through power attacks or a hero up, it is Moon Knight's basics that dominate the battlefield. Staffs in general having the most range out of the majority of the brawlers in the game. Naturally, you'll outrange most of your more difficult targets. The finisher also giving you a clear advantage to loot the string. His power attacks do complement this, hitting aligned enemies and knocking them around. But one provides no stats effect, and the other has a tendency to miss, being his major drawback. His second is much more consistent and provides a great way to move through the crowd when you need to grab some consumables. His hero up is perfectly average, so all in all, Mooney will really struggle in the boss rush due to his lackluster tools. And I know it's a bit of a tradition to roast the man within the community, so people expect me to join in. But why should I have all the fun? Don't go Moon Knight in the comments below. Gambit is a brawler with 315 HP, 123 total basic damage, a versatile RNG power attack, and a burst hero up. Gambit is very similar to Mark in that his staff really dominates the flow of combat. The key difference between the two is that while Moon Knight has niche but clear-cut scenarios on when to use his powers, Remy's is pure RNG. His most useful power attack will get you anything from a stagger, a hard hit, or a stun against a single enemy, or a mass pop-up. Obviously, you want the mass pop-up most of the time, but the others aren't too bad. Stun is rather long, and the hard hit is solid damage. The stagger is practically useless, though. Personally, I prefer consistency, so I range Moon Knight above Gambit. But if you prefer more utility, even if random, the most charismatic of the Edsmen is the guy for you. Frankenstein's bastard <coughs> is a brawler with 350 HP, 80 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, a 2-in-1 speed and armor boost, with a stunner hero up. Decent coverage and stats effects in his basics, combined with a long, nearly loopable stun in his hero up, gives him quite the advantage in tougher fights. However, his low damage across the board and lack of other tools will still leave him to struggle elsewise. Electra is a brawler with 315 HP, 93 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, and an airstrike hero up. Perfectly balanced basics. Fairly weak, but also decently fast, knocking enemies down before you know it to give her the edge. But her real strength comes with her power attacks and hero up, with one of the strongest plow through and invisibility moves in the game, along with an okay boss killer. The Dorky Angel is a brawler with 275 HP, 88 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a crazy good health boost, and a multi-hit aerial spin. Angel has great coverage and crowd control in his basic string and power attacks, and for an extra leg up, he has one of the most powerful health boosts. Unfortunately, his low damage and health leads him to struggle in areas like the boss rush. Not much else to dissect here, and I hate looking at his chest from the gym looking so let's keep going. American Girl is a brawler with 325 HP, 151 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, and a multi-hit ricochet. American Dream is a slightly less effective Captain America. She trades the damage boost for a forgettable ranged attack and instead of charging through enemies, she'll slam down some justice. Her hero up is where she can really outshine her gender bent variant, possibly hitting up to 3 times for a total of 274 at close range against the boss. What's his face? is a brawler with 300 HP, 104 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Sentry has average damage across the board, but his string is great for moving through a crowd. If you need to plow through a little faster, his knee busts jawlines harder than Superboy Prime when a timeline looks at him funny. You can sacrifice some range for more damage with his flurry of fists, or knock down everyone around you with his spin attack. Unfortunately, the wind-up and in lag doesn't make the knockdown spammable, so Sentry can struggle against tough goons, but only just. Hippie Thor is a brawler with 350 HP, 108 total basic damage, 
two complementary power attacks, and a burst hero whoop. Basic string has great coverage for hero whoop spamming, the move itself being above average damage, making him decent at boss killing. The animation takes forever so you are a bit of a saying duck for a while, but combine this with his second and third power attack and you should be fine. Spider-Man, can you explain what you're doing with a bag over your head? That's not me. That's not you? Nope. Okay. How about these? I can't believe you would wear something so ridiculous! Oversaturated single panel meme is a brawler with 315 HP, 87 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a functional lunge hero whoop. Not only is the character himself overdone, but his moveset outdone, by Black Suit specifically. Yes, the bombastic Batman is a variant of the same moveset with all the same tools but unfortunately much weaker. While the hero is still immensely helpful, the actual damage leaves the initial no damage received benefit a minimal one. Now, for some reason, a lot of tier list videos treat C tier like the beginning of the bottom. But surprisingly, I'm treating it like the average. As if that's what the middle of a chart has always stood for, and these fools need to go back to fourth grade. <clears throat> anyway, these characters are still viable, but you definitely have to put the time in. At least level 20, if not more. In this tier, we'll see characters that are equal parts excellent in some areas and PP poor in others, or characters that are just mediocre with no overt strengths. Pirate Nightcrawler is a brawler with 350 HP, 88 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 damage and armor boost, and a slam hero up. Swashbuckling Nightcrawler easily avoids damage with his evasive string and can further that advantage with the mass knockdown in his first power attack. However, he is simply too weak even with his boost to ensure victory in tougher fights. Does anyone know which pirate character came first? I really want to know who stole whose phase. Did Kurt see that Wade was a pirate guy now and steal his look, or was it the other way around? Crayola Angel is a brawler with 325 HP, 112 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 health and damage boost, and a burst hero up. Has all the tools of X Force, with none of the damage to make it effective. Crowd control is still top notch, but you will have to rely on your powers much more to succeed consistently. Against bosses, he is completely lost, dealing below average in his hero up. Mark Ruffalo is a brawler with 350 HP, 88 total basic damage, because when I see a gamma infused demigod that can destroy planets and can't die, I too think. Probably not as strong as a regular dude. Good call, Gazillion. Two complimentary power attacks, a damage boost, and a multi-hit slam. Like I already hinted at, Avengers Hulk is a little on the weak side. Sometimes this isn't a problem, a lot of characters are a little weak. But Hulk is also slow. He has the big boy trade-off without the benefit of that trade-off. However, his damage boost can make up the difference, and has decent duration on top of being safe to load up. His third power attack is already pretty powerful beforehand, and with the boost his hero up is a solid boss killer. But in the rush, and often against tougher goons, he is unfortunately much too slow to get good mileage out of the boost before dying. Iron Man, Mark 42, is a hit and run with 275 HP, 95 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a multi-hit light him up with an extra little cherry on top. And by cherry, I mean kitchen sink. Iron Man Mark 42 simply doesn't deal enough damage to take out high level enemies, let alone bosses, before his low HP becomes an issue. His evasive string will, however, help keep him alive in that regard. Additionally, his slam and missiles will overwhelm the wave both being completely safe on startup if you time it with his fly-throughs. His second power attack furthers his survivability with an energy field to deny any melee attacks that do land, although it deals too little damage and doesn't stick around long enough to really make Tony as untouchable as other Chad Walkers. All in all, these are solid tools but are at most a stalling tactic. You will eventually take too much damage. 
Monkey King is a Brawler Trapper hybrid with 350 HP, 120 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, and an aerial spin hero up that definitely isn't ripped off from Dragon Ball. Does Demexi answer to him? I never thought to ask. Monkey King is a staff wielder with really good zoning tools. His third and first power attack have insane range to cover his front, the third sacrificing some of it for more damage than the first. His second lays a mine that deals 35 to anyone who comes in contact for however many times they come in contact and upon the explosion. You can set up at least two at a time. Overall, a solid trap character, but all these tools are much too slow to control the flow of combat and keep the king from being overwhelmed when fighting solo. Michael J is a zoner trapper hybrid with 300 HP, 109 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and 3 in 1 intuple knockdown, speed, and armor boost with a unique multi hit lightning strike hero up. Electro is a well of versatility, but has no real meat to his kit. Did that make any sense? Probably not. Electro's basics, specifically the third and fourth move, will raise your star meter very quickly. His first power is a Chad Walk. He is the only character that can activate this move so quickly, but at the cost of being inexpensive, it also doesn't last long or deal much damage. You can still get some solid use from it with your speed boost, but what you really want to do is use it for keeping enemies off of you when they get too close, being unable to do this with his basic string alone. Set boost being an intouple knockdown as well, and is insane when combined with the beam attacks so Electro won't be overwhelmed as long as you utilize your powers and spam them. Zero Up is his main weak point, 35 per hit and only 45 with the boost. In the rush, you cannot be sitting there for a 3 hit attack just to deal average or even below average damage. The rest of his tools don't help him in this area either, being more tailored for goons. Electro is perfectly suited for any goon, but for all his strong points, he has an equal weakness against bosses, especially against several. Max was just hit too hard in this area to be ranked any higher. Groot is a brawler with 350 HP, 103 total basic damage, 1 exploitative power attack, a 3 in 1 intuple, knockdown, health, and armor boost with a multi hit slam hero up. Similar to Electro, Groot relies on tools that are too ineffective against bosses. Specifically, his hero up, being too slow for just average damage. Against Goons, he has a similar reliance on the boost, being far too slow without knockdown to keep a horde or tougher goons from overwhelming him. With mass done for a first power attack will allow you to load them up safely, and the move itself is particularly loopable given Groot's quick star meter gain. Overall, S2 results until taking one of the harshest hits in the boss rush out of the whole cast. Sandman is a brawler with 290 HP, 102 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 3 in 1 intuple knockdown, health, and armor boost with a multi hit burst hero up. So, like Groot and Electro, almost as if a similar detriment will lead to a similar result, Sandman will hit goons harder than life hit me after high school, but get smacked by bosses harder than Jason Todd after a date with a crowbar. For some reason, Sandman's giant stomp doesn't have knockdown by itself, and his plow through isn't as effective as others, so his dependence on his boost is even higher than others, and he has no real way to load it safely. However, the range and mobility on his basic string in tandem with how useful the buffs actually are along with the utility of his tools when they are combined with the boost will still carry Flint farther than most other C tiers. Indestructible Hulk is a brawler with 350 HP, 98 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2 in 1 health and damage boost with a multi hit airstrike. Indestructible, like all other Hulks, deals solid radial damage in his basic string along with plenty of knockdowns a solid foundation that alone will give him solid results. The first power attack is another knockdown, the kind of slam that you typically see as most characters third. His boost has a decent activation hitbox, pushing enemies back so you can load it safely, which given your knockdowns you could already do. His third is like a mini hero up, especially with a boost if you need it in a pinch. Speaking of his hero up, Oh sh**, here we go again. It's quite the boss killer, but only with the right spacing, which he has no clear way to do. The windup itself makes it very easy for enemies to move out of position even if you're good at just eyeballing it, making what could be a whopping 423 damage, or at least 141, potentially... No, consistently, zero, nothing. 
Indestructible is an amazing character otherwise, but none of the cast can make do without such an important component regardless of how good they are otherwise. I mean, it's at this past you know the concept fair and balanced, but we don't talk about him anymore. Hulk is, get this, a brawler with 350 HP, 88 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and a slam hero up. Hulk has none of the damage to warrant the slow attack speed, but what he does have is a plethora of status effects, all with decent range. He'll stagger, knock down, and knock away even the toughest goons. For his damage boost, it releases a mass stun that lasts a good while, so by all means, spam it. However, even with a boost, Hulk has almost nothing gets even the easiest boss as he needs stats effects to even be effective. I haven't slept in 8 months! Nightcrawler is a brawler with 350 HP, 104 total base damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and is functional lunge hero up. Though Nightcrawler is an easy punching bag given his hero up, it's fair to say this is balanced out by how hard he is to keep a beat on elsewise, his basics being intensely sporadic and mobile. With his mass knockdowns and plow through powers in tandem with his basic string, he will take on tougher games just fine. His hero up does have a hitbox upon returning to his original position, making the move a solid boss killer with 210 damage, but the fact that he can be wailed on during it and his other tools not really being suited for bosses leads him to take a heavy hit during the rush. Not Spider-Man is a brawler with 315 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, a 2 in 1 speed and armor boost, with an airstrike hero up. A less effective variant of Ben Riley, the string and sweep kick will still carry hard. But unfortunately, the web balls in the hero up is a mere 50 per hit. That's still a great boss killer if all four land, but that's abysmal damage if you only land the one. At least the other Ben was only slightly below average if you happen to be this unlucky. Scarlet does have the cooler name and that hoodie though, so choose wisely. Snowcone Iron Man is a Zoner Trapper hybrid with 315 HP, 121 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a multi-hit stunner. With a mass stun that pushes enemies back for her first power attack, as well as a knock down and away move for his second and third, Arctic is a character that will have no trouble keeping enemies away from him, but he also works up close. His arcing blast and the beams in his basis string being even stronger than his hero up when used at point blank, making quick work of anyone in Tony's path. Said hero up is where most of the community's problem with the character lies, which is definitely his weak point, and we'll get to that. That's why he's here on the list after all. But I need to set you all down for a second. Did everyone just forget that this move was buffed and just have blinders on when they go to use it now? Every complaint I've heard about this move is outdated, but I'm still hearing it. The damage sucks? 21 damage times 5 hits is 105. That is the average. What majority of the cast deals? Either you have very high standards, in which case, good on you. Or you don't really realize why the move isn't meeting your standards. So you're just throwing out something arbitrary. It's not just raw damage either. It stuns per hit before unleashing a long-term dance effect at the end. Given Tony's basics, you can get another online very quickly and loop this for an easy win against even the toughest goons. It did suck originally, only hitting once for crap damage, then applying a dance effect that was practically over before the end of the hero up's animation. But that is no longer the case. And I know that you know that, because Default has the same move. And it's a starter character. And there's no way you haven't played him and seen the difference. That being said, the main weak point for Arctic is that move during the boss rush. If three hits just for average damage is too long, five is an eternity. You are absolutely a sitting duck and Winnego will eat you like one. Several times the glutton. And while I did say the move, hand carry and loop in other situations, the stun effect needs adjustment. Sometimes enemies will recover before they are hit with another sound wave. Normally this is fine, like in a horde, but tougher goons tend to be able to get a couple whacks in. Now that does suck, resulting in this middle of the road placement between very good in some areas but very poor in others. 
and I would not be ranting about how people should shut up about this move if that is what your complaint was. Inconsistent, slow, poor against bosses, but no, the damage that he shares with 50 sets other characters is too low. Yes, I counted one of it. The defendant would like to clarify for the court that while he was stating facts, the tone that the facts was delivered in was a joke. 25 years? Yeah, fair. Iron Man is a slightly weaker version of his shiny variant, as in three attacks hit slightly less hard. Pre-promotion Miss Marvel is a Zoner Trapper hybrid with 300 HP, 100 total basic damage, two complementary power attacks, an armor boost, and a stunner hero up. Beans will cover a wide area, giving you access to a hero up rather quickly, which just so happens to be a long-lasting mass stun, making any horde a non-issue. Additionally, for some extra crowd control, you can dash through with her first power attack or send them all away with her third, staying the fight a little longer with her armor boost. Unfortunately for Carol, she is just slightly too weak to stunlock more difficult enemies for long before eventually dying. Bosses, who can't be stunned at all, really exploit the below average damage and wind up of the move. Hoodie Rogue is a zoner with 350 HP, 119 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, an armor boost, and a chat walk hero up. Avenging Rogue is a grab bag of several other characters' kits. She has Storm's first power attack, Scarlet Witch's shield, and Nightcrawler's third power attack. All of these combined with her string of beam attacks and get off me finisher gives her great crowd control. Her hero up will also give her an edge with tougher goons, being a chad walk. But said chad walk is not invincible, nor does it earn stars. It's not even as strong as hero up chad walks with similar deficits. In conclusion, Anna Marie will be hearing from her teammates lawyers soon. CIA Venom is a hybrid with 275 HP, 132 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a haywire light em up. Probably a bit more of an infantry specialist, Agent Venom will struggle on the front lines given his slow attack speed and low HP. His first power attack can help in this regard, being a quick getaway move that can break up crowds. However, getting out of melee range doesn't really accomplish as much as it would for others given that he'll just jump back into it for his fourth basic move. Still a useful tool, but probably just making my qualifier for complimentary. His second and third powers sacrifice some of the extra distance for more damage overall lending to some good crowd control. But where Flash really shines is his hero up, hitting for a good 163 at point blank. Pretty quickly I might add. Which ironically makes him one of the few characters better suited for bosses than the standard goon. Genius, billionaire, playboy philanthropist is a hit and run with 275 HP, 102 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Without the raw damage of his Midas variant, Avengers Iron Man will have all the weaknesses of that character but even worse, having none of the power to minimize them. Other than the tools that we've already covered, which again are at best a stalling tactic. Stealth Armor Iron Man is a ranged hybrid with 315 HP, 121 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, and a multi-hit burst. In some ways, stealth is better than both default and arctic, his hero up being a much better boss killer and his stealth ensuring he can collect consumables more safely. However, he'll have an even rougher time than they would when it comes to high level goons, not being able to stunlock them and likely dying. The CEO of Goop is a hit and run with 275 HP, 108 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, an armor boost, and an interruptible slam hero up. Rescue, like Avengers Iron Man, mostly rely on her evasion to survive. The key difference being that she trades the traps for an additional evasive attack. She's much less effective in the hero up department, being both below average in damage and easily prevented by a boss if she receives a strong hit. Super Copyright Infringement is a hybrid with 350 HP, 109 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Unfortunately for Super Scroll, though he jumps up pretty high for his hero up, his robot actually stays along the ground, giving anyone the opportunity to hit him hard during the long windup. Luckily, if you do survive long enough, the damage makes for a decent boss killer. Elsewise, Super Scroll may struggle due to the slow attack speed, but his stealth and mass stun will help him in that regard. Vodka flavored Iron Man is a hit and run zoner with 350 HP, 106 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Use his stealth field to maneuver around the battlefield and safely top off your health. Then line up your third power attack for big damage. 
Alternatively, you can come out with his snare beam, then back off to fire his ranged basic safely. By the time your slowed opponents can reach you, they'll be knocked down by your charge attack. However, his basics themselves aren't too great against high level enemies, and his hero up is below average, so he'll struggle against bosses. Family Pack Ant-Man is a brawler with 350 HP, 126 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and a multi-hit stunning slam. Unfortunately, this character is much too slow for only average damage. He'll take a heavy hit in the boss rush. However, the radial damage and crowd control throughout his kit will make him well suited for other fights. Red She-Hulk is a brawler with 350 HP, 104 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 health and damage boost with a burst hero up. Shulk has a decent advantage over crowds with two good knockdowns to finish the basic string, but with such low damage that will not be enough to guarantee victory over tougher foes. Her boost helps greatly, but she absolutely needs it active just to deal average hero up damage to a boss and minimize deaths against them, which she just can't reliably do in the rush. WWE star Dave Batista is a brawler with 290 HP, 89 total basic damage, two complementary power attacks, a 3-in-1 intuple knockdown armor and speed boost with a slam hero up. With one of the lowest basic damage stats in the game and with a below average health stat, Drax has his work cut out for him. Luckily, even against a boss rush, he can reliably plow through enemies with his first power attack, dealing damage and dodging attacks. His boost will also help, maximizing his already great speed and increasing that damage. His hero up is average and not too bad of a boss killer with the boost. Out of all the 3-in-1s found in C tier, Dratch is the weakest in my opinion. Having little means to load it safely, little raw damage without it, and not many other tools to compensate outside that evasive power attack. Farmer Barton is a trapper with 280 HP, 133 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a multi-hit slam. Avengers Hawkeye dominates hordes with his A tier basic string and any of his 3 power attacks to finish them off when they close in. A swing to plow through enemies, a mass stun that pushes them all back, and a series of explosives that can also help melt boss HP, though the move is quite hard to make land several times. Barton's issues lie in that all his tools are so good at waves that doesn't leave much to use in harder encounters. His hero up is poor as well, given its long wind up and in an animation for only average damage. Hotter Chris Evans is a zoner trapper hybrid with 300 HP, 87 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 2-in-1 armor and damage boost with a burst hero up. Human Torch is a very effective trap and zoner hybrid, but even the mass knockdown in his power attacks won't compensate for how slow his first few basic moves are. His overall speed makes it hard to keep tougher enemies off of you long enough to avoid at least one death. He'll also depend on his boost to deal significant hero up damage in the rush. Discount Jack Frost is a trapper with 300 HP, 84 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and an airstrike hero up. From hot to cold, yes, y'all know, in and y'all out. <clears throat> We're going from Torch to Iceman, who is a solid and satisfying ranged character, with all his ice beams hitting aligned enemies and being able to switch targets easily. When a horde eventually does get in his face, his first power attack has amazing range and will knock everyone down. You can also use his second for a bit less crowd control and more damage, or just commit to his finisher, which is a good blend of those moves. I wish his third could plow through enemies to really get his crowd control above the rest, but as it stands, it's actually kind of detrimental, only getting Iceman surrounded. His hero up is where most of his problems lie. With his average output, he will rely on it for tougher fights, but it's so inconsistent. You'll either deal a solid 150 or a horrible 25, depending on your RNG, even at point blank. This leaves him with little answers against bosses. ScarJo Black Widow is a trapper with 325 HP, 85 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 2 complementary power attacks, and a light em up. Her basics are slow, below average, and far too focused on a single target. Luckily, her power attacks help in the crowd control department, along with a powerful stealth move. She also has a strong hero up, but none of these tools are going to be as available as Widow needs them given her basic string. Overall, she has strong tools, but a weak foundation. Dolph Lundgren is a zoner with 300 HP, 161 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a multi-hit burst. If I had a nickel for every time a wrestler played a Marvel hero, I'd have two nickels! 
nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Punisher has solid A tier damage. His shotgun having a chance to hit twice and knock down at close range for a decent advantage in the front lines. If you do want to play at a range, or need to if the scene gets a little too hot up close, you can use your first power attack to get some distance. Or alternatively, you can knock down more reliably by unleashing a series of grenades or hitting aligned enemies with a sniper shot. Punisher has a lot of freedom in terms of how aggressive or calculated you want to play him, and will reward you for switching it up frequently. Too long didn't listen, good crowd control. Unfortunately, he is much too slow to avoid being overwhelmed by tougher goons, and none of his tools will really affect bosses. His raw damage may carry him through regardless, but it's not guaranteed. Felicia Mega Me Hardy is a hit and run brawler with 350 HP, 101 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and an aerial spin. Black Cat has 3 different means of charging through enemies for some really great crowd control. Her second power attack, while not as versatile, is a means to ensure that ranged goons stay in your threat zone. But outside of this, Cat has little means to deal with more difficult opponents. She may fare better if her hero up, unlike characters with a similar move, didn't have such a big blind spot up close. IRL Havoc is a brawler with 350 HP, 90 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a charging slam. A grade A example of a brawler, Luke Cage will be throwing more hands than arms fall off boy. But one question, why doesn't the character with impervious skin have an armor boost of any kind? We acknowledge Juggy's invulnerability with the highest HP stat in the game, but not the cage? Regardless, Luke is perfectly suited for crowds with a cloud through as his first power, and a series of pop-ups on his third. But these are far too weak to be much help in tougher fights. And while the additional hit on his hero up is nice, it still leaves Luke with little answers to bosses. Lucky Crab is a brawler with 350 HP, one complimentary power attack, and a multi-hit burst. Has the A-tier basic string, but none of the tools to go anywhere with it in a tough encounter. He has two throwaway power attacks, and while his third blast through hordes well, that's all it's really good for. His hero up will take too long for the average damage it's putting out. Overall, just a less effective version of default cap. Just like in the comics! Dun Dirty Dan is a brawler with 350 HP, 73 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a health boost, and a slam hero up. Despite his weak basic string, and the fact that they have a distinct lack of fists, the coverage on them is quite solid, giving you quick access to his crowd control powers and health boost, said boost being quite powerful. However, set boost is all he really has against bosses, making a potential B ranking a C, taking such a huge hit in that area. Herbie Spider-Man is a brawler with 350 HP, 88 total basic damage, one complementary power attack, and an aerial spin hero up. Get it? Cause he replaced the Human Torch? Future Foundation Spider-Man is essentially the default Spider-Man, but with the web pool as his second power instead of his third, and fills that slot with a series of web shots, completely nixing the boost that default had. He also cannot hit several times in his hero up like vanilla, so overall, he does worse in boss killing and crowd control. Not Not Spider-Man, or That Spider-Man, is a brawler from the future with 315 HP, 95 total basic damage, one complimentary power attack, and an aerial spin hero up. Spider-Man 2099 has one of the least effective variants of the Spidey combo, treading in the multi-hits for a headbutt that rarely connects or provides any use. Like Foundation, his hero up also only hits the one time. He still has great crowd control, arguably more so than default, but nothing to carry him through harder battles. And this is to go even further beyond! Steve Buscemi is a brawler with 350 HP, 91 total basic damage, 1 complimentary power attack, a 2 in 1 speed and damage boost, with a burst hero up. Average in all areas, nothing really special about him. He does have a damage boost that he can rely on, but can't be spammed due to its animation. His other powers provide great crowd control though. Hope Summers is a hybrid with 300 HP, 122 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a burst hero up. Doesn't have much going for or against her other than a fundamental flaw in her basics. 
She starts her combo off as a ranged character focusing on one target at a time, then dashes in with a wide attack focusing on more enemies, a solid follow up to switch to close range, then goes right back to focusing on one enemy like she didn't just dash into melee range. She's literally asking to be overwhelmed. Luckily, her power attacks are also good at crowd control. Her first two hitting aligned enemies, one faster and the other stronger, and her third will hit everyone directly in front of her for good damage. The best way to play her is to cancel her finisher and get the crowd off of you with a power. This makes her rather effective against waves. However, she still has little to no answers against bosses, given her poor hero up. She does get a little more damage off her arcing blast against them though, easily landing all three shots on the boss for more damage than usual. Hulkbuster is a brawler with 350 HP, 125 total basic damage, one power attack that is a necessity, thus invalidating the others, but we'll get to that, and a burst hero up. Hulkbuster Iron Man is overall a solid character. His basics are average, but balanced, and his hero up is slightly above average with a long lasting hitbox. However, he's quite susceptible to stagger. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but after fully recovering, he still can't move or use most attacks for an additional second or so, making it too easy to be softlocked until you die after being staggered just a single time. Luckily, his first power attack gives him some much needed crowd control and can be used in this state as well as his hero up. But this does still severely limit your options, being a detriment to ever have any other power attack readied, as they will not negate the recovery time. Firestar is a zoner with 300 HP, 84 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a burst hero up. A zoner with amazing coverage and crowd control on all fronts, but below average damage across the board makes her perfectly balanced, being well suited for goons, having a little trouble with tougher ones, and being demolished in a rush. Valkyrie is a brawler with 350 HP, 113 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and a stunning burst. Valkyrie is an unremarkable character all around. She won't necessarily struggle against hordes. Her range, boost, and third power attack will handle that, but she has nothing to turn the tide against enemies that are more of a threat. And her hero rope is slow with either below average or barely average damage with a boost, so bosses will also give her trouble. Reptile is a boring character. Legally obligated. Really? Okay, okay. Reptile is a brawler with 350 HP, 107 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and a burst hero up. Perfectly average, if not a little mediocre. His range is one of his main strengths, the tail whip and his basic strength practically covering the whole room, and his second power attack breaking up the entire horde whenever he's surrounded. But his low hero up damage and lack of any other tools will make any fight against a boss a struggle. Shulk is a brawler with 350 HP, 84 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. She-Hulk mainly suffers from the below average damage and poor range of her hero up, struggling in the rush for it. But outside of this, her mass stun and other complementary moves gets her some good ground, just nothing extraordinary. Gee, I wonder if the middle of the road boredom is setting in as hard for you as it is for me right now. I'm running out of fun ways to say this character is average. Magneto, Master of Magnet, is a ranged hybrid with 300 HP, 110 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and an airstrike hero up. Magneto is quite the hit or miss character, but does at least function as intended. His basic string has good get off me tools at the end to keep him at a comfortable range. If that's not enough, he also has a chad walk. That's the weakest in the game. His hero up is an amazing boss killer, if it hits at all. No matter how you space it, sometimes the meteors will hit 8 times or not at all. It's also one of the few moves to get caught by the mass geography. For every tougher encounter I passed, I died in a similar bout. I lost to a single boss, then wiped out 3 at once. He's just super inconsistent. Depending on your luck, I can understand putting him in B or D tier. Chris Hemsworth is a brawler with 350 HP, 129 total basic damage, 1 complimentary power attack, and a slam hero up. Avengers Thor has the fastest attack speed of all the Thors, 
but that's really all the man has going for him. His first power attack only affects a single enemy. His second hits aligned enemies, but for no real crowd control. And his third can split up a horde to help deal with them more easily, but so inconsistently so. This, combined with the below average hero up, gives Odinson little answers for bosses. But his strong points will at least lend to some wins over tougher goons. Overall, he doesn't excel at anything, but he doesn't have any major weaknesses either. Saving for Marriage Electra is a brawler with 350 HP, 93 total basic damage, 1 exploitative and 1 complementary power attack, and an airstrike hero up. Trades off some damage for a measly 35 extra hit points, making her average overall. Not IRL Havoc is a zoner with 300 HP, 98 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a damage boost, and a burst hero up. Your brother has to adorn his head with stupid accessories to avoid killing people. What's your excuse? You look like you're ready to play a game of Heads Up 7 Up. Havoc is far too focused on one target at a time during his basic string for proper crowd control. However, the movement from his fourth move will help in this aspect. His first power attack provides some much needed ride suppression, and his third covers him from all sides, so hordes won't be an issue. However, Havoc's damage is so low and his attacks so slow that he needs his damage boost in tougher fights. It should be safe to spam, given there's an attack attached to the activation, but the animation itself is so long you might die for queuing it up before you can make use of it. If you do get it, however, it makes this hero up an okay boss killer. Machine is a Trapper Zoner hybrid with 290 HP, 82 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and an airstrike hero up. Suffering from early hero syndrome, War Machine has one of the lowest basic outputs in the game. Its speed does not help in this regard, taking far too long to do any real crowd control. Luckily, his second and third power attack has you covered, the combination making Rhodey an odd Trapper Zoner hybrid. His hero up is a little inconsistent, hitting anywhere from not at all to three times for 300 damage. The common is only 100, and with his lower than average health, means he'll be hit pretty hard in the rush. I could have asked for help at any time. Why did I do this to myself? Ah! So Paint Iron Man is, for some reason, a brawler with 275 HP, 91 total basic damage, two complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Mark II is built like a zoner, both in low HP and back off keep away power attacks, which really don't complement the brawler this Iron Man is. Combine that with his low hero up and he won't be soaring too high. Don't get me wrong, he still got the results for C tier, but he'd be doing so much better if his kit worked together and it just doesn't. Sam motherfucking Jackson is a goddamn motherfucking trapper with 280 HP, fucking 101 total basic bitch damage, 3 complimentary power attacks, and an airstrike hero up motherfucker. Avengers Nick Fury has a mass knockdown for his first power attack and a mass stun and armor boost for his second, effectively keeping enemies away and complementing his more ranged focus foundation. Problem is, Nick is so focused on a single target and does so little damage that enemies will almost always be up in his face more than his other tools can compensate for. Combine this with his low HP and he will struggle. However, his hero up is a great boss killer, so he can come out the other side of a boss rush before you take too many deaths. Mother Out of job Marvel is a zoner trapper hybrid with 300 HP, 84 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and oddly enough a souped up version of a power attack as a hero up. Captain Marvel takes what makes most zoners effective and flips it on its head for the worse. Instead of a few single target attacks then ending the string with more powerful beams for excellent crowd control and star gain, he fires some weak beams then does the powerful stuff on a single target, almost guaranteeing his difficulty with being surrounded. This is where him being a trap character would come in, but Mance has some issues. His first power attack is spammable but inconsistent as hell, doing anything from only knocking down a single enemy to even covering behind him. It's a shame because if it worked better, that'd be a mass knockdown move you could rely on. His second has great coverage but is weak, his third is thankfully actually solid. If it wasn't already clear, his hero up isn't going to do much for you. Dumb Name by Night is a brawler with 350 HP, 109 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, an armor boost, and an interruptible slam hero up. Nothing is inherently wrong with this character, he just lacks any real strengths. 
which makes what little weaknesses he has more detrimental, such as being very slow and only really having any crowd control in his third power attack. His hero up, even if you could land it, is laughable. He can hold his own in the rush, but don't expect to be carried. Now onto the bad ones. I'ma be honest with you, Chief. These characters just aren't cutting it. You'll be lucky to survive the hordes, let alone a boss rush. However, if you are willing to grind, you might see the fruits of your labor at max level. In this tier, you'll mostly see characters with potential, but whose tools need you to be at much higher level to be effective, or characters who depend far too much on unreliable moves. Scarlet Witch is a trapper with 300 HP, 99 total basic damage, 1 exploitative power attack, and a mass mind control hero up. Scarlet Witch has one of the slowest basics in the game and little means to keep enemies off of her during them. However, her third power attack essentially gives her an instant revitalize button and makes you nigh immortal, constantly topping off her health and eliminating the most difficult goons in a single attack. Her first power can also temporarily take an enemy out of the fight if you need a similar effect for less stars, but there's little need for this. Same with her armor boost that pushes everyone back. The Burger is always the way to go. Her hero up is hilariously weak, but this just means your army has more health and can fight for you longer. Overall, most encounters would be a breeze for her, but against several bosses and little enemies to turn to your side or use for free health, she's god awful with below average damage and the worst hero up in the game for boss dispatchment. This means that she should be in C tier though, right? Amazing in other areas but terrible against bosses should give her a balanced result. Well, there's one more catch. The more people you eat or die fighting by your side slash die from your allies, the less people you yourself are actually dealing damage to, which severely hurts your score. This is a lose-lose scenario. If you do not spam the burger, you will die and get a poor score. If you do spam the burger, you will not leave yourself enough actual targets and get a poor score. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Dark Patent Stealer is a zoner with 290 HP, 91 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Unlike Iron Man, Norman blasts a laser in the ground to push back enemies for his second power attack and flies through them for his third, replacing the missiles and repulsor strike respectively. These tools are far less effective at crowd control and hurt Patriot's chances of success. The fly through should be exemplary at avoiding damage and be even more versatile than what Tony has, but the attack is currently bugged. It's unresponsive, sometimes not coming out when you are relying on it to get out of a jam. But the nail in the coffin is his technical hero up. With odd spacing and poor range, it can be a death sentence, which it is far too often. Green Goblin is a hit and run zoner with 275 HP, 131 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, a damage boost, and an airstrike hero up. Green Goblin is so close to viable it's upsetting. His basics are pretty strong and evasive at points and handles a crowd well, but his health is so low that he will need his other tools to help him through, which they won't. His first power attack deals damage to the whole crowd but not much else, getting you smacked pretty hard for using it. His second is a decent damage boost, but with a long animation that Gobby has no tools to compensate for. His third is genuinely great, getting Goblin the breathing room he needs effectively. Combine this with a weak airstrike, even with a boost, and you have a character that is going to struggle with anything more than a horde. I'm sure at later levels, he's fantastic though, having all the groundwork, but none of the damage in HP at level 10. Dr. Octopus is a brawler, because this face screams, I have the tiger. With 275 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, an armor boost, and a spinning burst hero up. Usually, when a big easy target is given one of the lowest health stats in the game, it's to compensate for really good tools. Doc seems to be the exception. His only reprieve from being wailed on power attack wise is a move that will also just make the problem worse and bring even more enemies to you. His armor boost would be useful if it provided any sort of crowd control on startup. As it stands, Doc is already so close to death's door on the regular that you might as well not use it. Otto's main strength is his wide swath of attacks, earning him stars quickly, but the attacks themselves are average and provide no real crowd control till the finisher, and the hero up it is helping you spam is below average. 
Though it being more spammable helps a ton regardless, Ock just doesn't have anything else to keep him in a tougher fight. Jarvis is a trapper with 300 HP, 88 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, an armor boost, and a dysfunctional lunge hero up. Vision is a very solid trap character with his beams and a decent stun attack, but unfortunately the move requires foes to be close together, resulting in less utility in any scenario outside a horde. His other power tots also have quite a bit of wind up, almost guaranteeing a loss to tougher goons. His lunge hero up is weak and leaves him vulnerable. This in addition to his overall damage and attack speed means he will struggle in most fights. I hate everything and I welcome death! Invisible Woman is a trapper with 300 HP, 106 total basic damage, 2 exploitative power attacks, and a chad walk hero up. She still has all the crowd control and no hit exploit as her stronger variant, but with no strong activation the hero up's not all that useful, and with such a weak hit in general, it's not as loopable. For comparison, Future Foundation will deal 180 on activation. Default will deal the same damage you will for repeated contact after initial hit. 7. You'll deal 7 damage. The Bat is still an absolute godsend, but she will struggle in harder encounters for not having nearly as much going for her in that hero up department. Heavy Spider-Man is a brawler with 315 HP, 88 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a 3-in-1 speed, armor, and damage boost, with a stunner hero up. Very much like default Spider-Man, except for the webbing, webbing, web bobbing, the thwip effect sounds different for some reason. Another key difference though is the hero up, utilizing a stunning camera flash instead of a multi-hit spider swing. The stun can be effective enough to make this Spider-Man more viable against tougher goons than default, but the damage is the fourth lowest in the game, and how poorly you will do against bosses for it is not worth the trade-off. Huge Jackman is a brawler with 250 HP, 94 total basic damage, 1 exploitative power attack, a dysfunctional lunge hero up, and passive healing. Street Clothes Wolverine is like a much worse version of Classic. Instead of a power attack that plows through enemies quickly, Street Clothes is taking way too much damage taking too long to do the same thing for less distance. Instead of boosts of any kind, Street Clothes gets a mass stun, but the animation at the end is so long everyone has recovered by the time you can act again. In fact, you actually might start getting hit while still stuck in this animation. His third is his saving grace. That actually makes even fights against high level enemies easier. He scoots up everyone in front of him for some good crowd control, and then for some reason the second part hits people way across the room, popping them up and leaving him free to attack, similar to the Invisibat. Not only is his launch dysfunctional, but the time it takes to finish will likely lead to Wolvie's death, being one of the slowest. Given this long of an attack, where he can be attached during it, to one of the characters with the worst HP stats in the game, was a very bad decision. You'll be dying all the time against bosses. Punk Storm is a brawler with 315 HP, 90 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, 2 in 1 damage and speed boost with a stunner hero up. Mohawk Storm has very little going for her. It's like she's supposed to use her speed to overwhelm the enemy, but has no means to actually do so. Her only strong crowd control move being her third power attack. Her hero up will also handle bosses poorly, without a boost. She relies too heavily on it to be effective in general. Ant Woman is a hybrid with 315 HP, 75 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and an aerial spinning light em up. With this character, you're best off spamming her third power attack. It has great crowd control and will knock an okay portion of health off a boss. This is preferable to her hero up, which barely does more damage and has this weird property where, after landing 6 times, enemies are no longer hit. This leaves her open to attack while she spins 5 or so more times in addition to a long dizzy animation afterward. While her third power attack fixes this issue, her overall poor damage and lack of any other good tools leaves her with little chance to survive any encounter outside of a horde. Dumb Helmet Thor is a zoner with 350 HP, 115 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and a ricochet hero up. Classic Thor is a mid-range character with an unfortunate amount of point blank blind spots. Basically, you have none of the range to hit enemies far away and very little tools to keep them at bay and where you can hit. When enemies are lined up in your threat range, it is quite solid, but you're still wide open from behind. His second and third powers can hit multiple aligned enemies for some much needed crowd control. Except, how many you'll actually hit is wildly inconsistent, and this still only covers your front. Classic Thor's one saving grace is his hero up. 
hitting multiple times if the enemy is in the flight path of the next target or as it flies back to Thor's hand. This legit led him to die into the waves of goons more than the heroes and boss rush. D tier built different. Rogue is a brawler with 350 HP, 90 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and a slam hero up. Rogue has below average hero up and basic damage, so naturally she's going to have trouble in tougher fights. But what really knocks her is an absolute lack of crowd control. She is far too focused on a single target. When using her first power attack, she will actively avoid hitting targets you lined up between her and who you clicked on, opting to walk around them even if she was already in range. However, her third actually helped me move through a few enemies directly in front of me, and spamming it led me to surviving a higher level encounter. But I doubt I could do this consistently, having barely survived, and against bosses, she is quite lost. Sam Alexander is a hit and run with 325 HP, 117 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, an armor boost, and a dysfunctional lunge hero up. Sam has overall average damage, but what sets him apart from the average C tier is his tools. And not in a good way. Most attacks, akin to his first power attack, pushes enemies away for some breathing room, which would be amazing for a first power attack. But Sam's Cosmic Circle doesn't have this property. It has good coverage, but so do his basics. So you're just better off using those. His second power attack is an armor boost. That takes a year to come out, making the damage you're having not worth the trade-off. As in, most situations you're taking just as much to get it online. His third is a decent get off me tool, which Sam is otherwise desperately lacking. These all just don't play well with his Russian style present in his basic string. Set basics being his strong point. They are quite good at crowd control and evasion, saving me from death many times. Arguably, how he outshines the real Nova. But his hero up is still one of the worst to have in the game, and the final determining factor for Sam's placement. America Zap is a brawler with 350 HP, 137 total basic damage, 1 complimentary power attack, and a slam hero up. Avengers Captain America is a character with above average damage but little to no tools to warrant B tier. His stun and gun achieving the same goals as his basic string. You're best off spamming his third power attack, his saving grace, and pretty much his only crowd control move, which floors dozens of enemies at a time but otherwise Cap will always get swarmed. With a below average hero up and no direct answers to bosses outside of it, the first Avenger is not making the team look good. Silver Centurion is a hit and run zoner with 275 HP, 97 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, and a burst hero up. On paper, Silver Centurion should be right behind 2020 as best Iron Man. He has strong basic attacks with plenty of movement as well as a chad walk. However, you are unlikely to land all of these attacks, so he's not really focusing any fire. So in practice, his damage is only slightly above average. If he ever does more than two attacks, they have a terrible time linking with each other, effectively making his damage even worse and removing his evasive properties, which given his low HP is a huge detriment. His chad walk would help cover this, but it's the weakest in the game dealing a measly 4 per repeated hit. Tilt that off with his low hero up, and not only will he likely die in most high level encounters, but you are guaranteed no more than a bronze at the end of the boss rush. Nicholas Cage is a brawler with 350 HP, 114 total basic damage, 3 complimentary power attacks, and an aerial spin hero up. Ghost Rider has plenty of crowd control across the board, but only on his front constantly hitting aligned enemies, but if they surround him, he can easily be overwhelmed and die. His basics are much too slow for average damage, and his hero up is the opposite of a boss killer. It only hits once for average damage, but Ghost Rider will just sit there, swinging around more, dealing no damage, and receiving plenty. Also, it's kind of disappointing they couldn't bring Richard Grieco to voice the character again. Not that Steve Bloom does a bad job, uh, Fred Tassacore probably doesn't even do a bad job, it's just that they don't let their natural gifts shine, they just auto-tune it and auto-tune it. It doesn't sound intimidating if it just growls in a garbage disposal. Look, I, I just, I feel that if a voice actor is an artist, the artist's intent is kind of lost if you just take whatever they do and auto-tune it and- Yes, get over it! Right, no, sorry. Now what we're here to talk about. Josh Brolin is a hybrid with 325 HP. 141 total basic damage, 2 complimentary power attacks, and a burst hero up. Unlike other basic hybrids, Cable will address the whole crowd throughout all his basic moves. However, this is the extent of his crowd control. 
He can pepper on average damage all around, but has nothing to keep enemies off of him other than his second power attack, which is quite good for either dashing out of combat to hit an enemy further away or stunning a portion of the enemies directly in front of you. Its coverage can be quite inconsistent though, and it's not enough to prevent Cable from dying to a horde. Against bosses, with a low damage hero up, he has even less answers. Though his basics at point blank can help slightly, being able to land every hit on the boss. Phoenix is a trapper with 300 HP, 103 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, a health boost, and a stick and move hero up. Take away White Phoenix's damage and you're left with the OG, a character that is far too easily swamped whose ability to dwindle a swarm of enemies is so poor that her health boost is negligible at best. Now, some of you out there think a health boost equals automatic adamantium metals. Let's do some quick math. I'm going to be generous here and say you gain back 20 HP every 5 seconds. However, every single second you'll take 15 points of damage. See how the health bar is still dropping? Keep in mind, if you run around to avoid taking so much damage, you're still going to lose your score multiplier. Yes. It's one of the best boosts in the game, but it does not automatically make a good character. In this particular instance, this boost is a death stalling tactic at best. Guardian is a trapper with 280 HP, 101 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, an armor boost, and a slam hero up. Guardian has poor coverage and little means to keep enemies off of himself till the end of his string. His third power attack will floor all enemies around him, but Guardian will not gain stars quickly enough to spam this. The animation for his armor boost makes it detrimental to use in almost every situation. Overall, he will struggle in most encounters, having low HP and little tools to justify it. Ryan Reynolds is a brawler with 250 HP, 128 total basic damage, a burst hero up, and passive healing. Deadpool has a few strengths to him, of which can get him through some high level scraps but his weaknesses far outweigh his benefits, often resulting in multiple deaths in areas that even other D tiers could thrive. His basics have great crowd control for his 4th and 5th move, but his beginning 3 are so slow and single target focused, his 3rd in particular, that you may perish to a horde before getting to those stronger moves. His hero up has decent range in A tier damage with a long lasting hitbox, but the end lag is too long. His power attacks take the worst of it, slow wind up and long end animations for average damage. The lowest health stat in the game, you can almost never afford to use any of these, meaning DP essentially lacks a vital component to his moveset. Bad Hulk is a brawler with 350 HP, 111 total basic damage, 1 complimentary power attack, and a slam hero up. His basics have great coverage and deal balanced damage throughout, so it's decent against hordes. But unfortunately it's far too slow for only average damage to be useful against higher level enemies. His third power attack has this clunky animation that can leave you vulnerable at the end, but it can also at least help you mow through the crowd to grab consumables, and against bosses they can sometimes be hit multiple times for solid damage. His hero up leaves him a sitting duck, as after dealing the average, he sits there trying to pull his axe out while the boss can well on him for free. Psylocke is a brawler with 350 HP, 88 total basic damage, two complementary power attacks, an intouple knockdown boost, and a burst hero up. Psylocke's string has great range but poor damage and speed, making it very easy to overwhelm her. Her power attacks are just as slow, so it doesn't help much. Her slowest move is easily her hero up, huge wind up for below average damage. The best way to play her is to spam her second power attack to keep enemies floored. Combined with her range, this gives her a clear advantage. But what separates her from characters like Daredevil is that the boost itself, like her other moves, is one of the slowest in the game. About half the boost duration is taken up by the activation animation. Given that this is possibly her only viable tool, and that she can easily die before even getting to use it, and even if she doesn't she'll constantly be putting herself in that gamble, Betty finna struggle. F tier. Otherwise known as God's Mistakes! No, but seriously, everyone in this tier was either hit really bad due to a current bug in the game, or were originally designed with no foresight. Holy sh**, this is a bummer. Maybe going top down wasn't such a good idea after all. Thor is a brawler with 350 HP, 88 total basic damage, an intouple knockdown boost, and a stunner hero up. Thor is a solid character for the most part, 
His damage is below average, but his boost is unique in that it applies more range as well as the knockdowns, easily making hordes a non-issue. However, his hero up is absolutely useless in solo. Even against high level goons, the damage is far too low to be effective, not to mention bosses who can whack you for free while you do literally no damage for half a minute playing the guitar. He goes from a high C to an F for just how many deaths you will take in each boss encounter, let alone a rush. Deluxe Edition Thor is a zoner with 290 HP, 120 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, and an interruptible stunning burst. Solid range and crowd control. Combine this with his armor boost and mass pop-up power attacks and waves will be a non-issue. However, these tools are not strong or spammable enough to rely on in tougher fights, making BA Thor rely on his hero up. Sad hero up is below average with an in animation so long everyone he stuns recovers long before he does. Assuming it's not a boss who can just interrupt you. Yes, his strongest tool is not only slow, but interruptible. He performs so poorly in high level encounters that I could not put him in D despite how well he does with hordes. Spider Woman is a trapper with 325 HP, 86 total basic damage, 3 complementary power attacks, a stunner hero up, and is our last spider person of the day. I live! What's so annoying about Spider Woman is that she has good tools, but for some reason or another, they aren't as useful as characters with similar traits. In fact, you'll die quite often. Don't bother attacking at a range. Not only do you get much more point blank, but you'll fly into the crowd towards the end of her attack string anyway. Which in lies her first problem. Her best means of not getting overwhelmed is null and void. She'll fly in and focus on a single enemy after getting herself surrounded. She has a mass pop up as a first power attack, which should make hordes an easy fight, but the animation at the end leaves her open to be attacked by anyone outside the initial attack's range. Her second and third are decent crowd control directly in front of her, with the third blasting everyone away, but the startup is so long that you'll still eat a lot of damage. Her hero up is a mass stun that lasts long enough to get a good portion of your combo in for free, but is pretty low damage. Overall, with all of these combined with the right timing, it'll increase your chances of survival, but it's really by the skin of your teeth. And against bosses, they just have too many opportunities to will on her for free. Dr. Doom is a hit and run zoner with 300 HP, 98 total basic damage, 2 complementary power attacks, an armor boost, and an airstrike summon. Doom is a potential high tier that took the harshest hit in the boss rush out of the entire cast, including my bottom one. As I mentioned before, there's a bug in the game in that characters with summons can be frozen in place or unable to target enemies for a time. Doom has this the worst, being stuck the longest and unable to target afterwards even though other characters with this issue usually had to deal with one or the other. Ignoring this issue, the move is still ill suited for the rush. The raw damage is completely lacking, and your lackeys typically die with one good hit. And against Wendigo, or similar bosses, Sad Hit could possibly take out the whole cavalry. But without the glaring bug, this move may have been extraordinary in other areas. Outside of this, his overall crowd control is excellent, and though he is a little slow, his finishing move will always give you the room you need to activate a power attack safely right out of his basic string. Iron Man, but Trash Can, is a brawler with 320 HP, 135 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, and a burst hero up. Even with his great basic damage, he'll have trouble in most encounters. He doesn't really have anything going stats effect or movement wise until the fourth attack, which given how slow each attack is, that's not good. His powers are solid though, his first covering a great range and his third dealing solid damage, his second being a blend of the two. His hero up is way too slow for the average damage it puts out. In fact, I had more success just using his third power attack instead, even in the boss rush. Hawkeye is a trapper zoner hybrid with 300 HP, 146 total basic damage, 1 complementary power attack, and a burst hero up. Despite his A tier damage, range, mobility, and other zoning properties, Hawkeye really suffers from having the slowest attack speed in the game. This will in all likelihood result in you never using his strongest basic attacks in lieu of his mass stun just to stop the attacks that are flying at you way faster than the arrows you are shooting. His other power attacks are just as slow and only focus on a single enemy. So even though his third should be a clean escape option, it just doesn't work out that way. His hero up is also stupid slow and below average. Hawkeye needs to keep his distance and spam his second power attack just to avoid multiple deaths at even the easiest challenge. Grey Jeans is a trapper with 300 HP, 
103 total basic damage, one complimentary repair attack, and a Chadwalk hero up. Her one get off me tool is a Chadwalk that only does 3 damage on repeated contact, doesn't gain stars, and isn't invincible to knockdown like other Chadwalk hero ups, essentially making her one solid crowd control move still a poor one. She has a mass slowdown effect, but you need to be in close range to actually slow down enough enemies for it to be useful, defeating the purpose because they're already on you. If you can use it out of range and still affect a good portion of enemies, she can attack so slowly that they'll still swarm you. Her other power attacks are either slow and ineffective, or still not giving her the status effects she desperately needs. Combine this with her overall damage and she won't do well in most scenarios. Nicholas Furious is a trapper with 290 HP, 110 total basic damage, 1 exploitative power attack, a burst hero up, and one of my favorite characters. Can viability be changed? Will they allow it? Nick Fury is an overall fundamentally flawed character. His health, attack speed, and main source of damage implies he should be played at a range, but he's rewarded for being in the center of a mob. His third basic move is fired in such a way that you need enemies close to you to maximize damage, opposed to keeping them at bay like other peer trappers, the leftmost shot dealing more damage than the others, which will only land if you are surrounded. Unlike Rocket, Coulson, or Rhodey, Fury doesn't have many tools to make being on the front lines safe, but his third power attack will at least smack enemies around for being on top of you. Like Monkey King, every time someone comes into contact with it, let alone attack it, they receive 60 damage. They will then receive another when the LMD explodes. However, despite being his best method of damage and crowd control, it is still far too slow to avoid Nick from dying himself even with the evasive action attached. Speaking of slow, there may have been maybe three times that I didn't die during the windup of his hero up. Due to only having one viable method of attack, which uses that term loosely mind you, an ineffective hero up, and an overall fighting style that flies in the face of the foundation he is built upon, I can confidently say Nicky Boy is your worst option. I spent however long this segment was digging pretty hard on a few fan favorites, even my own. Now would be an excellent time to reiterate the point of this whole ranking. How viable a character would be extremely early on with some of the toughest missions in the game on their own. This does not mean a character can't succeed later on. Hell, in a team setting viability is a mute point. For example, Hawkeye and Fury would be an extremely effective duo, with Clint providing the cover necessary for Nick to plant his LMD more safely which would in turn keep enemies off of Clint so they can keep helping each other. So to clarify, this is a focus on what could be balanced, what needs fixed, and who is suitable for the crisis grind. Play whoever you want. Unless it's Thunderbolts. You're carried and all the homies hate you. For listening to my rants and hearing me out for this long, I have a special surprise for everyone who has watched the whole thing. Please, if you skipped ahead, click off the video. This isn't for you. I know this won't matter to some of you, but with so much build up to this video, it only seems fitting to do this now. Okay, I'm stalling. It's like a band aid, you just gotta rip it off. My long awaited face reveal. In three, two, one. <laughs> Oh, you buffoon! You literal buffoon and professional jester! You thought I would reveal my most coveted secret? <laughs> okay, now that the cheaters have left, listen up. Time for the true prize. What if I told you this entire list can be disregarded? Because I know how to completely nullify the biggest penalty in the game. Doing so will ensure the highest possible rewards for even the characters I claim to be the bottom five. Simply die. No, seriously, the penalty stops being applied after 10 deaths, so if you just commit unalive at the start, you can play as poorly as you want and still get adamantium. Completely defeating the purpose of all my research. 